So fire in the Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the finals weeks of November for Battle for Valhalla. I am Ageville, and by my side, I have Austin. Austin, how are you doing tonight? I am excited uh, to get this tournament underway. It's the final week for uh, November, and we are in the finals. We're going to have some nice gem prizes tonight, too. 
Yes. So here in the first game, we're going to see Meepa and the Windows playing with a few subs versus Frisky Business. So Austin, run with me. How does it matter playing with subs on your team when it comes to like important matches like this and championships? Um, team, syner team synergy can definitely uh, be a little bit off uh, when you have uh, even multiple subs. Uh, team synergy can definitely uh, lack a little bit. Uh, the 3v3. Uh, with the mid jungle and uh, support is usually what takes the biggest hit. Yeah. As we are already in picks and bounds, we saw Susano and Terra being banned from the side of me behind the windows and Raw and Ying Wei from Frisky Business. Athena. Are you are you uh, surprised by these bans coming out? No, these are all very uh, high picks, very high rated picks in, in each of their roles. Um, honestly, some of uh, the... the uh, most impactful characters that we see in each of their roles specifically. So these are really, really uh, solid bands. Yeah, the first first pick coming up was actually from Frisky Business, and they chose to pick up this Athena, which is actually a god that Catman has been performing very, very well with lately, and actually for a long time. So meanwhile, Erlang Shen was being open for uh, Meepo Isis. and the Windows, who now lock it in. Yeah, and um, I Erlong think, Shen. honestly, Meatball on the Windows might have gotten a little bit better this trade. Erlong Shen is just so impactful, no matter what role he's placed in. Uh, the pin uh, with the root and the, and the cripple is just extremely powerful um, against really any character. And uh, his knockup, he just has so much CC uh, available to him. I like this pick a lot more than the first pick, Athena, in my opinion. So we have this Isis that was locked in for me and the Windows for the mid lane. This is a little bit more of a setup mid with a lot of CC. What do you think they're looking to pick here in the jungle? Um, I would like to see uh, something like a Thor, uh, just to keep up. Uh, Thor and Isis uh, really have unmatchable pressure in the mid lane uh, during that yeah. 2v2 time. Uh, Thor and Isis together are really just extremely powerful. Um, so Isis. I would like to see something like a Thor or something with more high CC. Erlong Shen. Even high C higher CC, that may, might be a pretty brutal lane to try Sarah. to control here for Frisky Business if your, uh, your predictions come true. Meanwhile, for the side of Frisky Business, we do see Desilla, who has been a one of the two gold to gods from Tim Pip, who also favors the Vulcan, and also Drana Tosker, who's currently been performing pretty good with lately. Yeah, this is definitely a pick that Kirmi has been playing a lot, um, even in casuals. Um, I do I do play with Kirmi a lot, and he does really like the rat. Um, so I'm excited to see what he can do. Uh, has pretty good setup with Scylla and with the Athena, uh, even better setup. Uh, so they are really looking to draft this team comp around this uh, Scylla played by Tim. Rom. Yeah, also interesting to see is that the Rama was actually locked in for Meepa in the windows, and Frisky Business, they banned out the Yingwei themselves, and Rama and Yingwei are the two ADCs that we've been seeing um, Subfocus play the most actually lately, so it's going to be a little bit curious to see what he is going to try to bring out here for this game instead. I'd like to see uh, maybe something like an On Her. Uh, on Her is another character that we see a, a lot in the ADC role. Uh, something that can really match the early pressure that Meatball and the Windows have on their team right now with the Isis and the Erlong Shen. Um, so an, an On Her would be a good pickup, I think. Yeah, he is good on that on. He also has an Apollo that I've actually seen come out in scrims here. It's going to be interesting to see if that is going to be picked here in the... Uh, fight versus Aram, who's more of a late game god where honor actually lacks a little bit. Second round of bans have been started here. Odin and Hu Yi being banned out from Meet Wendy Windows and Frisky is taking away some of that CC in both the Thor and the Humbats. Seems that they they uh, heard your predictions maybe. Yeah and so uh, again just taking out all those uh, high crowd control characters uh, so maybe something like uh, a Fenrir uh, Fenrir could be very good in this situation here, able to pick up, uh, some, like if Scylla gets caught with her Sentinel down, uh, he could pick up the Scylla and they would be able to just burst her down with this team comp that they have here. Yeah, I've actually also been spectating some of Meepaw and the Windows matches. And I know that Aquas so here back. actually favors the Erlang Shen, so I would not be surprised if that is indeed an Erlang Shen uh, jungle. Meanwhile, Frisky Business looking here to uh, for their last picks. What do you think they should be opting for now? Missing uh, ADC, 
and uh, soul laner. Um, so again, I would like to see the on her. They didn't ban it. Uh, yeah, and he is going to be hovering the on her right here. And on her will just be able to uh, mat. Now, with the Sobek locked in, that's most likely going in the support role. Um, they really won't have be able to have pressure uh, because Sobek really just uh, commands the duo lane. Uh, but he will uh, be able to get out without too many deaths, hopefully, on with her. the on her. Or too much problems at all. <laughs> yeah, it's a tricky match of being an honor versus Sobic. Because what the Sobic does is he plucks you, and then most ADCs are able to leap away, but honor sleep is just a little bit slower than most other leaps. So it's going to be a little bit trickier for him to get himself out there, but hopefully the Athena taunt will be of his service. One more pick here for Nipa and the Windows for Jungler. And they are going to be hovering the Nemesis right now. Um, and I would like to see them kind of stray away from this. I don't really think this is a, a good pick. They could uh, be looking to uh, pick off Athena if she is going Nemesis. to be initiating. And they are going to lock in the Nemesis here. Um, so what I'm expecting them to do would be kind of pick on this Athena when she dash taunts. Uh, but other than that, there really aren't that many targets uh, that Nemesis can ult effectively. Uh, so a bit of a questionable pickup. Yeah, not that many tanky targets on the side of frisky business, but, you know, they have, might have a combo up their sleeve. They might be looking for a, a Isis spear ball into Nemesis ult, into Isis ult, or into an Erlang ping, uh, Erlang pin or something like that. We'll see. I'm sure these teams both have a reason for the comps that they picked, and I'm really excited to see what they will bring out, guys. You guys will see it as well after we take a little short break and set up the game for you. See you guys soon.
about the time you take up uh, While you put on your makeup Put that makeup, don't hide those lies you tell We go round and round on this carousel I can see the signs, baby, you can spell Being with you is H-E-L-L Don't let the door hit you on the way out Ain't it funny how all the games played out Like I don't know what you're doing when you stay out Trying to lock me down, I had to break out Cause you lie, we keep rewind, we tweet We act like those that you see on TV What a crying shame With a body on that frame and a half a brain Damn Here we go, guys, and we are back with the game. On the side of Meepaw and the Windows, we have Sekiri playing uh, the Erling Shen in the Soul Lane, Risky Ace playing Rama in the Duo Lane as ADC, Sir Bomberman in middle with that Isis, Mojo Cat playing support Solbeck, and Aquas in the jungle with the Nemesis. And on the side of Frisky Business, we have Solo or Troll in the solo lane playing Fenrir. We have Kirmi in the jungle on Ratatosker. In the mid lane, we have Scylla being played by Tinpip. And in the dual lane, we have On Her and Athena played by Catman Pants and Sub Focus. All right, so one question that actually came out in the chat here was which dual lane do you think is the strongest, the Athena and the Honor? Or the Rom and the Sobek? Uh, well, so Rom does have the ability to hit all of the minions uh, with his auto attacks, uh, although it is for just a couple autos. Um, but I, in my opinion, I do believe that the uh, Sobek and the Rom will be able to have the advantage uh, just because of the displacement from the Sobek uh, and the uh, fear of getting plucked uh, by Sobek. And just getting put out so far out of position uh, can will really uh, stop sub focus and Catman pants from from being able to get pressure this game. Yeah, usually the uh, on actually you guys might wonder a little bit because Honor indeed also has uh, a lane clear skill that is his impale, but that skill actually costs a lot of mana, and Honors do not have a large mana pool unless they do build transcendence, which sub focus has not opted to do here. So he might find himself a little bit as a deficit in this clear right here. Also, Mojo Cat should be able to be a little bit aggressive and uh, heal up any of the poke that he takes. Yep. So uh, over here in the mid lane, we have uh, the 2v2 uh, going on right now. Uh, both mid camps are already down, and they are just going to be farming up here. Uh, but again, the uh, meatball in the windows should have um, the lane advantage here just because Isis has such good clear early on right now. So I want to talk a little bit about this Isis here, because she's been building uh, first Soulstone, which is fine, but then also Imperial Helmet that potentially should has a little bit less magical power than what the Sula has to build the Lost Artifact. Yeah, uh, so she is most likely going to build that into a Dynasty Plate Helm, uh, just because uh, Ratatosker is this uh, early to mid game uh, aggressive jungler. Uh, who could be putting a lot of uh, pressure onto this Isis that is uh, fairly immobile. Yeah, so we're at two minutes now. Not much has happened in the game so far. In a couple of minutes, we should see the uh, first Gold Fury fight coming down. And we see a Wrath on the side of uh, Frisky Business on that Solar Troll. But none picked up yet for Meepa and the Windows. Do you think that uh, Sekui will pick it up as his active? Uh, I think now that he has realized that the Fenrir did pick up Wrath, he might go for it. Or he might even opt to go for the teleport knowing that. Uh, if he does go for the teleport, expect him to, to teleport over to the left side of the map uh, pretty early on so they can maybe uh, get a Gold Fury before Fenrir can make his way over there. Yeah, as we discussed a little bit earlier in this duo lane, it is actually Meepa in the Windows who has that early pressure. And this Mojo Cat, who is the first one able to rotate here to the mid lane and give a little nice uh, solo farm here for, uh, for Risky Ace. Yeah, and so uh, he was going to try and uh, hide himself a little bit to, to try and get catch someone off guard. Uh, but Kirmi and Tinpip were both at the back camps. Uh, but Ratatosker is going to be going up in the air to the solo Level, the first level 5 gank of the game comes here. Kirmi goes down on Sekiri. 
Solo Troll does pop the ultimate, not being able to catch Sekiri, who does put that tortoise shell. And now he ults Kurumi, he does have an Athena ult for himself. Even Mojo Cat's trying to do damage. The uh, Athena protections are helping Kurumi, though, to sustain that pretty well. And also, a shell was popped there uh, from Catman Pants, protecting his uh, general there, who was able to come out pretty healthy. Yep, and so uh, they are still going to get aggressive onto these blue buffs, but Kirmi is just going to get absolutely erased by Aquas. Uh, yeah. That is going to be the Nemesis ult, as well as uh, a lot of ults on the side of Meepo on the windows, actually. Yeah, again, when you have that soul bake, you have a little bit of a um, zoning advantage, and if anyone from uh, the other side, the other team here, namely Kirmi on that uh, Tosker, steps a little bit too close, it's going to be game. And meanwhile, in the duel lane, we actually see a soul heal coming out here from the late game. Risky Ace onto the early game on her. And that is very bad news for Frisky Business right here. On her is a character that excels very early on the game, very early on in the game, and, and uh, very well into the mid game. Uh, and Rom is not that way at all. So to see that him get that advantage so early on uh, is a bit troubling for Frisky Business right now. Yeah, a little bit surprised actually that uh, sub folks would drop that kill a little bit uncharacteristic and he's going to find himself uh, at an uphill battle right now as a lot of a lot of uh, Meepa in the windows people are on the left side of the map but not that many friskies and that go fury is starting to look a little bit juicy right about now yeah uh so uh, Zekrui actually does not opt to go for the Wrath, but he does go for that uh, Teleport, and he did use it to get back to lane so he could get that blue buff. Uh, but once that comes off cooldown, expect them to start targeting this Gold Fury uh, at about uh, 7 or so minutes. So, since now Meepa and Duino sit not off for the Wrath, what kind of objective secure do you see on the side of uh, their team? Uh, Isis ult uh, is the one that absolutely screams uh, objective control. Uh, just being able to charge up that ult uh, while you just hold it under the Gold Fury uh, and being able to pop it whenever, uh, it really is one of the best uh, objective securing ults in the game. And hopefully uh, Bomberman will be able to use that to good effect this game. As we say that both Mojo Cat and this Isis indeed are closing in to this Gold Fury. They are looking at that as well, forcing a rotation here from a frisky business who can't really leave the mid lane. And here's the uh, taunt coming from Athena onto Akras, who immediately responds by diving the back like Tipper then gets um, Blocked by Mojo Cat and uh, taking out in the end. Catman Pants having to use his ult to try to get away. Wait, but the Isis ult proves to be too strong and pinches Catman Pants off before the ultimate hits. And that's two kills now for Meepa and the Windows who now find himself four kills up. Yeah, and Tim Pip was just a little bit out of position. You really have to watch your positioning when you're around a Sobek like that because of the pluck and how long uh, of an ability that is. Uh, just being able to uh, get plucked by Sobek, especially when you're in early game Scylla, uh, is just asking to get killed. I would have liked to see them go for the Gold Fury, but they are going to rotate over the Solo or Troll and try and pick him. Uh, it is not going to go in their favor, uh, but after that pick onto Tim Pip, I would have liked to see that. Meanwhile, in the dual lane, the rotation is being spotted, and it is actually being called by Solo Troll to his teammates, who have a free leeway to gank and take out Risky Ace here, and now the dual lane balance is almost equal again. Yeah, and uh, they were looking at that Gold Fury after that pick onto the ROM, uh, but there was the uh, four-man rotation from, or actually five-man rotation, or four-man rotation, sorry, from Meeple on the windows uh, to go back to that Gold Fury. Um, they didn't end up going to the Gold Fury. Uh, Frisky Business actually could have uh, snuck that. They had no vision on it at all. Um, but that could have been a big swing for Frisky Business. Yeah, right now Meepa and the Windows have four words around the Gold Fury, but for, so does Frisky Business, and Frisky Business are the ones who do have the center straight on the Fury, so it's going to be a little bit harder for Meepa and the Windows to sniff that out. I'm a little bit surprised still by their rotation to that soul lane. If they were not, if they were not ready to commit and tank that tower to get the kill, then I'm not sure what, you know, what they really thought they could get. Yeah, I think uh, Frisky Business definitely had the right mindset going for that ROM. Uh, they did end up getting the kill.
uh, but they just did not were not able to follow up uh, being able to get that gold fury, which uh, was relatively free. So a uh, bit of a bit of a dropped uh, advantage for first business here. Teams are still very much interested in this gold fury. They both see that they both have a, some people around right now, and both teams actually back off. Meanwhile, in the uh, solo lane, Solar Troll actually taking out Sekui in a one versus two, and now he's also aggressing on to Aqua, so he's out of mana, having to escape. Now, underneath the tower, Solar Troll is trying to get the kill. He does so just before the Athena ult hits. He will still have to pay for his life and give that return to, to Aqua. However, Phoenix is being too strong, and meanwhile, since Kaman ulted to protect um, his. Uh, friend here, the rest of Meepa and the Windows are going for that Gold Fury, it's only sub focus there to try to fend them off, but the Ice is all proves to be way too strong. Uh, finally, they are coming here for this rotation Frisky business, but it's too late, and the first Gold Fury of the game goes to Meepa and the Windows. And uh, so, in return, uh, Frisky business is going to try and go and get this mid-tier one, uh, mid -tier one tower, uh, but there will be just a little bit too many people there. Ice Soul is down, uh, but pretty much every ult is down on the side of Frisky Business. So there, re there really is no way for them to keep that pressure up. They're just going to go back to farming. Yeah, it's possible that they learned from that engagement in Soul Lane that it's a little bit too early to tank towers just now, and they choose to back off instead and buy some items. Do you see anything interesting coming out in the build so far in the game? Uh, yeah, so uh, Nemesis does have the Thousand Fold Blade, which is uh, most likely going to go into a stone cutting sword. Uh, and we did see the price reduction uh, come out for that item a couple patches ago, and we haven't really seen much of it, uh, but it is an extremely good item for Nemesis. Nemesis does really well at uh, taking people's protections and giving them to herself, and Stone Cutting Sword uh, does exactly that. Uh, so that should be the next item for that. Meanwhile, we did see an invade coming out from me, but it was on to this speed buff, taking it away from Kurumi on the side of Frisky Business and keeping up a little bit of a jungle pressure here in uh, at the uh, right side mid heart piece. Yeah, and they uh, are not going to be able to get the blue. Uh, Solo or Troll will be able to pick that up for himself and uh, go back to lane. Uh, but first, uh, Meatball on the Windows are definitely taking advantage of this lead that they have. They're up about 3,000 gold, and they're just uh, taking all these small objectives that they can at this point, just trying to extend their lead and then start to take these big objectives like the towers. A little bit of poker going on here in the uh, dual lane. Subfocus is backing off. However, maybe he is sniffing out that rotation that was actually going to him. No, he's going to take his boars. Little does he know, the four people here of Meepa and the wood is going on to him. The jump is there, he's trying to see the mutant himself with the Death of Fury. Catman Pants is also trying to ult him, not being able to do so. And the subfocus gets taken out, another kill here for Risky Ace. Yeah, uh, the team did communicate to him uh, that there was a rotation coming his way. Uh, at least it did seem that way. But unfortunately, oh, Catman is going to get blocked here. And uh, he should fall. He will to the Isis. And Kirmi's going to have to ult out, but not quite fast enough. He is going to fall down. Sir Bomberman will get the double kill. Um, but a little bit too, mu uh, too uh, much for Subfocus to handle. He uh, did not retreat far enough. He was not aware that they were going to uh, keep chasing him like that. And this is going to be a tier one. Yeah, also a little bit of an effect of the slow jump here from from the honor he was not able to close the distance in time and also the tier one tower in mid lane falls for frisky business and me and no one they're not happy with that they want to get some uh, wolf steak here yep and uh solo or troll is gonna have to uh just barely get under his tier one tower uh if he were any later he possibly could have died he is at half health uh but frisky business is looked like they wanted to fight that uh but they weren't able to stop the Erlong from backing, and uh, nothing gained for Frisky Business here. Yeah, I think they might have been a little bit more careful here as well. They did get pretty shredded here. I feel like the gold lead is starting to uh, be very visual here for me, but the winners who were able to burst down both Kaman and Kumi earlier in the jungle, and Frisky might have to be a little bit more cautious where they step foot from now on. 
Yeah, uh, just a little bit too many people uh, getting caught out by the Sobek. The Sobek has been hitting all of his plucks um, and has really been the driving factor into uh, why they have gotten this lead. Now Akos is trying to seal the speed, does so with the Nemesis. Meanwhile, three angry, four angry people from Frisky Business are trying to <laughs> punish him, but he's able to dash away. Being that Nemesis, he forced out the Athenals very prematurely now. And Meepo and the Windows are noticing that Subfocus is again alone without the Athena to be able to rotate. And they're quickly moving to the left side of the map. But here, in instead of the uh, Honor Lion, they found a juicy red buff. Yep, and so that is basically free. Uh, Risky Ace was able to poke out Subfocus enough uh, to where he didn't feel comfortable going to defend that red buff. And so they just really had to give it up there. Uh, Frisky Business is uh, definitely not in the position to fight if they are looking to do so right now. They are going to poke out Mojo Cat just a little bit. Uh, yeah, Mojo getting out of position here. Worth mentioning is that Team Pip did, it was able to, I don't know, steal or maybe secure his own buff finally. So he did get that red buff in the end. I mean, Invade was actually not worth anything for me, but and the Windows were uh, not backing off here. So, uh, good. Uh, Good try from Tinpip. He was able to pick that up in the end, uh, but he is going to go ahead and back and uh, hopefully finish up this. Uh, no, he is not able to finish. Up. Oh, he is going to finish this Book of Thoth, uh, just as I say that, uh, which is a little bit too late. Uh, he is behind, uh, but he is going to start stacking here at 15 minutes. Uh, so we could see this getting finished probably no earlier than 20 minutes, which could be bad for Frisky Business. Meanwhile, in this uh, left side of the map, there's a lot of movement here around the goal here being at both teams, obviously being a very interesting. Four people from side of Frisky are wrote into this versus the four people meet when the winners who have started the goal here. They recognize they're ahead. They recognize they are the ones who want to take a fight. Mordecai dashes, but misses the pluck. It's haunted. It poked out by Catman Pants. Now with 30% HP, having to pop the shell, not being able to be there for his team anymore. Catman keeps being aggressive sub focus and himself also being pretty poked out a little bit careful here is the old from Kirmi hitting no one at all even though aquas is in that jungle now popping the shield to sustain himself old thing catman pants able to dash out as that athena people not being able to close that kill even though risk case does have his ultimate he saves it and they instead go for this goku two members of risky Beast are here as you know this coming on a solo troll the jump defender comes too late the goku does go to meet behind the windows the fight is on three members of Frisky Business versus five members here of Meepa in the Windows. Frisky having to escape. The rest of the team is there, but four of them are getting pretty low, and they're going to have to back off and potentially give up this tier one tower in a dual lane. Frisky Business are so lucky that they uh, escaped with all five of their lives in that situation. Uh, that was, uh, unfortunately, they did have to contest that uh, all five. It was a full five on five at that Gold Fury. They didn't really have uh, a choice in that matter, uh, but a bit of a late jump from Solo or Troll. He did have the Wrath, uh, so he did have a chance to steal that away, but he was just a little bit too late on the draw there. Meanwhile, Frisky aggressing here onto two members of Meepa and the Wind, who overstayed their welcome bit, Mojo Cat being a little bit plucked, Solo Troll getting way too far in, whereas Sekri is trying to dive the backline of Frisky, getting punished by the Silo, getting reset, not being able to get another kill. Akos being in the middle of five people, Frisky Business, not where you want to be, uses the Sanctuary for no use. Risky Ace is there, trying to do some damage for his team, but he's now out of mana, getting impaled by the uh, um, Honor, getting a nice return kill. Bomberman is alone underneath this tier 2 tower here, and Frisky Business are able to tank it and poke him out, and suddenly there's four members dead, on the side of Meepa and the Windows, what a turn here for Frisky Business. What an awesome fight for Tinpip specifically. He basically hit all of his abilities right there um, and really was able to turn that fight with a really big Scylla ult. And then all of his crushes were just doing massive damage to everyone on the side of Meepa on the Windows. And they will be able to pick up that mid one tier two uh, because of that. And they are, are so, they are also going to go for these buffs. Two members here meet by the windows are rotating, but I have to be careful because there's still four members of Frisky Business in their jungle here, also taking that blue buff away from them and now aiming for the tier one tower in Solane. And I'm not sure if Meepa and the Windows are in position to defend this. 
Yep. Uh, but unfortunately, Frisky Business uh, is going to back off. Uh, there were Mojo Cat and Zachary were both there. Uh, so they decided to just go ahead and farm up, take the safe route, which uh, I do agree with, and go ahead and farm up and try and shrink that lead just a little bit. They are down to about a 4,000 gold deficit right now, which is definitely smaller than it was before, uh, but a still behind nonetheless. Yeah, there's still only a few levels behind here. We see uh, Kama Pass being two levels behind Mojo Cat. We see some folks being one level behind Risky Ace, and uh, so it goes on. I want to talk a little bit about this matchup here with, with the ROM and the Honor, because we're now at 19 minutes, and you know they're both level 16. Who is starting to kind of you know uh, tip over here in in terms of late game damage? Do you think? Uh, definitely Rom. As this fight's gonna break out, Tinpip is gonna pop the ult and is gonna miss completely, but Kirmi is in the air, dropping on Aquas. He is gonna be able to escape with his life. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone will too. Angel guard here for Aquas, or maybe just good peel from his team. He's able to get away with minimal health here as uh, the rest of his team is actually popping a sprint, trying to chase down Tinpip here, recognizing he doesn't have ult, and he's having to use his beads instead to get away from that spirit ball. Solar Troll trying to go straight to the back of the Meepo, and the wind is able to do so. And here's the Desert Fury, so focus is just waiting for that target to be held. Bomberman goes goes down to Solar Troll with that Brutalized camera Pass getting real low, Solar Troll getting returned, Kimojo's getting really low, but I'm not sure if some focus can close that distance. He is staying there a little bit chewy to take attention from Catman Pants, who's able to back, lazy back in that jungle with very low HP, and the fight ends uh, one for one. Yeah, and uh, very uh, good trade for Frisky Business here. Uh, at this point, with these one-for-one -one trades, uh, that is pretty much always going to be in favor of Frisky Business right now. Just getting kills and, and getting uh, gold. And since they are behind, they are going to be worth a lot less when they die. So uh, they are going to be getting the better of these trades uh, as of right now. They're getting more and more confident as well, invading and actually taking this red buff away from me by the windows and that risky ace. And they're hovering around this gold fury who should be spawning pretty soon. Yep. Uh, so we the gold fury will be spawning here in the next uh, about 30 seconds, uh, but they are going to uh, have most of their attention on this right side. Uh, the wave, the enemy wave, is pushed up. So they are going to push that up just a little bit. And I would like to see uh, some more wards come out on the right side of the map specifically. Because now is the time that teams are going to start looking for the Fire Giant. And Frisky Business have none on the Fire Giant side of the map. Uh, so they should really start to get on that. Yeah, they only do have that sentry really close who is at the lower mid camp for them in the solo lane. Uh, Solar Troll here trying to aggress a little bit onto this uh, mana buff here from uh, taking it from Sekiri. Meanwhile, the rest of the members of Meepa and the Windows, after recognizing um, there's a lot of people from Frisky on the right side of the map, they actually do go for the go here. The ice is all just popped. Again, there's no one there from Frisky Business. You might want to think a little bit about their objective warding at this point as the gold fury is free. Frisky is showing up for the fight, but no team has really engaged just yet. Yep, and this is the biggest problem with uh, Frisky business uh, that I've seen is really their objective warding and their warding in general. Uh, off of the objectives, their warding has been pretty good. They've had good control of the left side of the jungle, uh, but in terms of the gold fury and the fire giant, they just have fallen short. The uh, Ratatouille squirrels going up in the air here, not hitting anyone on Meepa and the windows, recognizing that he was a little bit predicted and uh, they weren't really grouped up within his range. So he just drops that ult on no one at all. Meanwhile, Solo Troll is, uh, is left behind by his team and aggressed on by Meepa and the windows, who could surely try to take him. He jumps on where he is, having to use the brutalize to get away and get some distance to the members of me but there's Namzy still coming out of my Catman Pants who's trying to dash away Ooh, and uh, three members of me behind the windows getting uh, rooted there in uh, place where potentially they were 
maybe stunned by uh by the no they were not stunned they were just rooted yeah, <laughs> nice kill uh, there coming out from risky business yeah a huge uh three-man root from tin pip was able to stop the aggression from meatball on the windows uh in what could have been a couple kills and a really bad fight for frisky business ended up uh as a stalemate so uh a good good uh stop of the aggression right here they just really need to slow the pace of the game down right now uh tin pip is almost done with his warlocks or not warlocks that's his book of thoth mm -hmm. and he has his shard online so he should start to get these really expensive items online next and then he'll really start to be chunking uh the players on meatball and the windows yeah we said he was a little bit behind earlier which was in indeed True, but now he's getting pretty equal here to Sir Bombman in this mid lane, and he's going to have a lot of impact in these team fights. Yep. So uh, I would like to talk about this Rom a little bit. Uh, he, but uh, in this last patch, we have uh, seen a, a pretty big price reduction to Odysseus's bow, and uh, a lot of players would think that Odysseus's bow is going to be coming back into the meta just a little bit. Uh, but both uh, both ADC players. Uh, did opt for this Ikvil instead still. Um, so opting mm -hmm. for that uh, 1v1 potential still. Yeah, like, I've talked, spoken, uh, personally, I spoke to Risky Ace about this just the other day. He says he thinks that Ishvil is still invaluable when it comes to the early game boxing in that dual lane. And in late game, you don't really trade it out for this is bow either, because you need that executioner to uh, to cut through the penetration and protection built up by the enemy team. So there's not really um, a place in the game where I think that they would pick up with this is bow right now. Yep, uh, it is really just trading this uh, pretty much uh, for sure 1v1 potential from the Ikevil for this uh, really good team fight uh, item on the side of Odysseus's bow. Uh, but guess Ikevil is still winning out just a little bit, um, and it is still a cheap 1700 gold. Uh, so just really still a very good item uh, for ADCs. Uh, yeah. They just slow down in the pace of the game, which. Like I said, is good for frisky business right now. They are down about six thousand gold, but as long as they keep farming, uh, once both teams get into the full build and both teams start hitting level twenty, uh, frisky business does have the uh, better team fight overall. We do see some wars being dropped here by frisky business by Team Pip around this fire giant. And the Meepa in the windows, they spot that in their own sentries, that there's some people around there and they're rotating just to make sure here. Frisky Business, of course, also know about these rotations with the new wards. And they're showing up for the fight. Wow, Kurumi getting bursted down by Aquas. Catman Pass as well by Sir Bomberman. Two people of Frisky Business gone within a second and now the Meepa in the windows are starting up this fire giant. Yeah, uh, just no one on the team uh, was really in range of being able to follow up for that dash taunt, and that is going to be a free fire giant for risky business. Uh, as Solo Patrol is very out of position, he is going to fall down to Aquas, and they're yeah. going to sprint down the right lane jungle, uh, looking for more picks and potentially even the tier 2 tower in the solo lane. Yeah, we do see the ping is coming out here. Timber trying to zone him and hold him off a little bit with his crush. The pokes also there. They're not going to be able to hold this tower though, and they have no peak, so they're going to have to keep their position here as their tier two tower falls. We did see Solo Troll. I mean, he did a valiant effort. He had that hog. He wanted to take the fire giant, not being able to steal it. And as a result, me behind the windows now has five people with fire giant underneath the tier two tower frisky business, and uh, it's starting to look a, look a little bit grim for them here as they now rotate to two of this uh, dual lane tier 2 tower recognizing that this should be the next target for Meepa in the windows. Yeah, and uh, they really uh, should not be defending this right now. Catman is going to get a huge taunt but will immediately and get Nemesis ulted in the turn. Sigan coming out, still coming out as well, not being able to burst anyone down. More Cat ulting underneath the tower on the sword, but Tim Kirmi going up in the air. On Rat House, but Rama just going up. Huge knock up here by Kirmi to four people. Sir Bombman almost going down. Desert Fury coming up at some focus, but its pass is best before date in this game, not being able to really get anyone down low enough. And me find the windows are, however. Going to back off and buy a little bit of items and heal up since Sir Bobberman and a few other members are still a little bit low here and they want to be they want to be sure. And meanwhile, they're potentially leaving this gold fury for Frisky Business to take. No, they are staying 
by and uh, those three members of Meepa and the Moon is with the fire giant is enough to scare off the four members of Frisky Business. Yep, uh, and they are just a little bit too scared of these fire giant uh, team members on the side of Meepo in the windows. Uh, they really shouldn't even be going for these mids right now. They are going to give them up. Actually, they are going to test these. Mojo Cat is going to get taunted here. Yeah, he got taunted. He was a little bit out of position, able to get away. However, having the protections also from his reinforced greaves who were triggering. Frisky Miss is taking it a little bit safe, splitting that red buff. Meanwhile, Meepa and the Windows are starting to go Fury. They are recognizing it's a 4v4 and they have the advantage with that Fire Giant buff. They are, however, just looking to bait a little bit. So they do drop this go Fury, recognizing that the um, actual Wrath is up for Solo Troll. So he should be able to contest it. They just want to bait the fight here. The, forcing the uh, dash out of Catman Pants, who are now not there to peel for his squishies, who are the two targets closest to this gold fury. They have to be a little bit careful here, and they are, as Meet by the Windows does get this gold fury for free, being respected by still having this fire giant buff. Yep, and uh, they are just going to have to give that up uh, to Meatball in the windows, extending their gold lead to almost 10,000 now. Uh, and they are going to finally push down this tier 2, and potentially this should be it. Uh, Sub focus is going to get plucked, but he will beads. Kirmi is going to ult onto the back line, and this looks like a good fight for Frisky Business. So the troll does pick up Aquas there. Aquas are using Sandra, being able to avoid the death of Fury here. It's a combination we've seen Frisky try run before. Sub focus being plucked and not being able to last very long until those five fire time members of Meepa and the Windows gets bursted down very quickly. Kirmi being out of position here and side of the members of me by the windows. I'm not sure who he wanted to peel for, but he was not able to do that either way. And now the three remaining members of Frisky Business are desperately trying to defend this uh, dual lane Phoenix. Yep, and this uh, should go down. Catman Pants is going to get erased by Meatball in the windows. Tim Pip uh, will get plucked. The Aegis is going to get popped here, and Tim Pip is going to fall to Bomberman as well as the Phoenix. And they're going to move on to the mid Phoenix, uh, taking no chances. Uh, going for this Titan quite yet. Yeah, Tim Pip there having having using his his beads, his purification just a little bit too late, not being able to avoid that pluck. He uses Sanctuary, but it's not really going to help much as we find the windows takes down both the mid and the dual lane Phoenix. They could probably try to end here, but they are respecting the response of Frisky Business and they are instead opting to take this jungle and the potential group up for the next fire giants. Yeah, with all three Phoenixes down, honestly, uh, Meatball in the Windows could stay here for the next 30 seconds. They are going to decide to back, uh, but if they wanted to, they could have stayed for this Fire Giant. Um, and Frisky Business have no real way of contesting it, because if that fight does go badly, that will uh, more than likely be the game uh, for Meatball in the Windows. So uh, they really uh, have the huge upper hand in this situation right now. Yeah, Fire Giant is going to be the next target here, most likely for Meepa and the Windows. If they wait and extend the fight a little bit, they're going to make Frisky Business have to choose between their Phoenixes or letting go of this Fire Giant. Frisky now should be trying to put a little bit of awards here in the jungle to know when the rotation is coming into their base. Not doing so, however. We do still have a Wrath in our Solar Troll. Do you think he's going to try to seal this Fire Giant once again? Uh, yeah, his jump is going to go down, uh, just trying to get away from all this damage. Uh, but I don't think he is going to have a, a lane to get into this Fire Giant. He's going to try, uh, but he's yeah. going to change his mind at the last minute. That is the Fire Giant for Meatball and the Windows. Catman Pants is going to taunt to get the Nemesis off of Sub Focus. But Catman yeah. is going to get plucked and immediately erased by the Nemesis ult. And uh, this looks like it's going to be game for Meatball and the Windows. It's looking pretty grim indeed for Frisky here, who would have needed that taunt around their Titan to be able to sustain. Now, five members of Meepa and the Windows with the Fire Giant buff are waiting at their Phoenix, waiting for a Fire Wave to come. Kurumi is up in the air on the Rattles room, but Meepa not grouping and he does get three knockup in the back line. Soul Troll jumps in trying to get a target. Timpy ready with the Silo Ultimate to hit whatever. 
He's trying to chase him, but he connects with Sir Bomb and he uses that sanctuary to even not being able to get a kill. Risky is going up in the area on Solo Troll, who does heal by the uh, by the fountain. But Meep and the are now opting for that Titan. They're able to get it down, and that is the game for Meep and the Windows. Yep, and uh, in 32 minutes, uh, Meatball in the windows were able to take the game 18 to 8. And uh, pretty much, there were a couple good fights for Frisky Business. They did win some very clean fights, uh, but unfortunately, it just was not quite enough. Meatball in the windows were able to take the game and move on into the next round. Yeah, indeed, we saw a little bit of a nice fight back for a little while for Frisky Business. They almost got that D side, were not able to close in on the gold lead though, and they they started getting a lot of picked off picked off here by the pluck of this Mojo Cat Sobek. Yeah, Mojo Cat just played extremely well. He was a part of 16 out of the 18 kills on Meatball in the windows, and his plucks were just absolutely on point. He basically fed his teammates all of these kills. Uh, especially Aquas. Aquas popped off on Nemesis, and uh, like I said, he did taunt that Athena every really every time she dash taunted, and there really was no way for Catman to get out. Yeah, like you said, they did look for those picks, and they got those picks. Guys, we have a little bit of a roster change here, actually, on the side of uh, Frisky Business. Catman Pounds is actually support looking for a new team here. So if you guys want a solid support and a very, very good Athena, you should hit Catman Pants up indeed. We also want to give a little bit of a shout out to our sponsors here tonight. Of course, Discord, who we're partnering with for our little Discord server. We have Gamer Subs, who does uh, deliver energy powders. Uh, check out their site, gamersubs.gg. Use Smite Central as a discount code. We do have um, the high-risk code, but I believe the high-risk expo tickets are already out. If you're able to, if anyone new, any new tickets are released, the code is Smite Central to give get a little bit of a price reduction. And not to forget also Loot Tracker, which you can check out if you wanna wanna take part in any of those giveaways. That is going to be it for uh, for just now. We're going to be back very soon with the next game here, which should be between uh, the commitment committee and the winner between gibbering jabbering and stay with and the footlongs it's a game you don't want to miss guys so stay tuned and we'll be back with that one soon
All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to the Smite Central 5v5 Battle for Valhalla. My name is Tiger, joined on the desk with Bryce, and we're going to be bringing you the round two match, Perp Skirp versus Team Way. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty hype match. Team Way, a pretty well-known team, and some players on there who can make a, a pretty big impact. And we already have a few bands coming out, with uh, Susan Terra on the side of Perp Skirp, and Erlong Shen being banned away by Team Way. A big surprise there, Tara. The name of the game is Sustain. She brings so much to the table in that global ultimate to help out everybody on the map. It's just, go ahead and take it away now. We've seen Ra being banned out before, especially in the SPL play. Guan Yu, also big if you want to try and fight that Sustain. Perp Skirt may want to try and pick that up. Yeah, all three of those gods are uh, very frightening, as we do see Janice actually being banned away. A god who has a lot of mobility and can put out a lot of damage and makes a big impact in these team fights. Uh, I'm kind of expecting to see something along the uh, lines of Raw or Guan Yu to come out for Perp Skirt. Now, I don't know really anybody on Perp Skirt, but I do know a lot of the players on Team Way. They're familiar names that we've seen from Smite Central. And also the Challengers Cup scene, which, you know, we've casted before. They share a lot of the same players. Perp Skirt still waiting. Gonna go ahead and wait out that pick, with, but banning the Arlang Shin, I want to see something strong for solo or jungle. Yeah, uh, Thor actually being uh, locked in here. As you said, something strong in the jungle. And Thor being able to uh, land down and put out so much damage is definitely... Uh, I'd call him strong. Have you seen his muscles, by the way? Like, whew. <laughs> it's bringing the hammer time for sure. Team Wade banning out Giannis, who's one of the only others that have that global ultimate. The only thing left that would be able to have that kind of global presence is Athena. Team Wade, I'm not sure if they want to go ahead and grab that first. However... I mean, they've they've gotten rid of two possible supports as Terra and Terra and the Arlang Shen can go either way. Jingwei is being hovered over. I would have liked to see that with the Terra, but it was already banned out. Still, she's very formidable by herself. Yeah, Sylvanas is actually going to be locked in here. I was kind of thinking uh, of somebody who currently has a Wonderland going on right uh, right now to be locked in. Fafnir, still a fairly strong pick. Uh, in support, having a lot of CC and being able to, like, he kind of makes team fights incredibly different with his presence. The the ultimate coming through that knock up. Knock ups are the most ridiculously OP CC in Smite right now. If you don't bead right before, even if you're in the middle of the knock up, you're stuck. You're screwed. You're SOL until you hit the ground. So Sylvanas with that Wrath of Terra is definitely something you don't want to contend with. Plus pulls helping feed Jingwei these early kills is paramount for Team Wei to win that early duo lane presence. But Hu Yi and Sobek picked up. Whether Sobek's going to be solo back or support back is still on the line. I'm kind of thinking of an Awelix that uh, might be coming through here with Jingwei and Sylvanas. Already on the side of Team Wei, Owelix would be a great way to add some synergy into that team. And along with Hu Yi uh, being on Perp Skirt, his, uh, he's going to be pulled very easily by that ultimate whenever he tries to escape. Knockups OP, please nerf. Still waiting. They don't have a jungler, so Owelix would be a good pick. But Perp Skirt would be able to counter it with those last two picks. Instead, Robin going to be hovered over and locked in immediately very strong contender in the solo lane there's not many gods that can go toe to toe with them in the first couple of levels yeah known as that solo lane bully one of the most prominent gods there solo back would be a way to go to make sure that you have that tankiness and uh sustain that way you don't die to him as we are going to see raw be banned out by team way get rid of some of that sustain uh potential for perpsker if Sobek does go solo, I don't expect to see a lot of kill potential early on. I do want to see the high, just the high damage numbers coming out of both of these gods robbing and to be able to top it early. Sobek, he normally tops damage charts if you're playing him right for the first couple of minutes just because he's able to get in, get out. All of his CC does damage, and that's the big tipping point there. But Perp Skirp going to focus on the mid lane. Go ahead and get rid of that Scylla. Yeah, both sides focusing on the mid lane here. Scylla, a strong god, getting having that ultimate, uh, being a monster, if she gets the reset on that ultimate, it automatically makes your entire team either have to use relics to be able to live or try to run away. But with that speed on it, uh, not too much is going to come out of it. While Raijin is actually going to go ahead and be banned mid lane, still being focused here. 
Team Wei putting a lot of focus on the mid lane. Three mid laders banned out. Arlang Shen is a great flex pick, but I've never seen him in mid. Not going to give him credit there. Last bang coming out from Perp Script. Going to be the Rada Tosker getting rid of the last viable pick, in my opinion, that Team Wei would have been able to pick up global wise, other than Athena. So now it's up to Perp Script. They're picking up their last two Team Wei. Still have not picked their jungle. So your prediction could be right. We may see that a wheelish. Yeah, as Alquang, who somebody who normally doesn't really make it this far, especially in my ranked games, whenever I want to play him, uh, he's he's kind of a very strong jungle option here. Being able to uh, pick off some of these gods like Neek after they uh, after they use you were escape. doing so well. Hold on, you were on point. Don't re <laughs> I saw <laughs> the opwash. You you were the chosen one. Come on, gonna lock in that Vulcan and the Guan Yu. Sorry, continue. I got scared. No, I was I was kind of hoping the offwash was going to be locked in, but this is Smite Central, and this is the land of trolling your casters, so offwash is not going to be locked in. Vulcan, though, is going to be here. Is the Awelix going to come out, or what other kind of jungler do you expect to see? Well, there's a lot of flex here, and Kabraken could definitely fit that bill. Kabraken would be able to go to solo, but... I want to see the fat Loki. I want to see fat Loki in the jungle <laughs> to lock down Vulcan early on. Vulcan has no escape using Kabraken's ultimate and the trimmers. Vulcan's going to have to pop his backfire or pop his relics early on to get away from Kabraken. Guan Yu, if he gets locked in the trimmers and stuck in that ultimate, he's still going to take a lot of unnecessary damage. That is going to be locked in Kabraken. I want to see him in the jungle. Yeah, I couldn't imagine him going anywhere else. Uh... I mean, he could go uh, the way of support, you know, maybe he's, uh, he's a guardian, so technically that's, that's where some people would think to throw him. But I, I love the idea of, play of Kabraken in the jungle. His CC and his lockdown on gods is so strong, and it's just so fun to play, too. It, it's just, this team comp is very designed to bully gods and kill them early, and Vulcan's going to have a little tough time. Yeah, but Perp's group have something, have a big advantage over Team Way currently, and that's magical damage. They've got Vulcan. Team Way have four, or uh, Team Way have three physical. Kabraken's going to be that only bit of guardian damage coming through. Sylvanas, he's a lot of damage over time with those whips, and then just a lot of damage coming down with the ultimate. Aside from that, they don't really have that burst. They don't have the Giannis, they don't have the Scylla, they don't have the Vulcan. Or the Raijin, they don't have anything that's going to be able to melt you down. So it's going to be the sustain game coming out from Perp Skirp. And because Team Wei let them have Guan Yu, they just need to wait it out. Yeah, it's uh, it, that's definitely what's going to be happening here. Guan Yu uh, is going to be able to sustain his team fairly easily. And I'm kind of hoping that some anti-heal is going to be built. Uh, Brawler is hopefully on Neath and... I'm thinking that Curse might be a good pickup here on Kabraken to be able to make picking off targets even easier. Definitely, especially targeting with that anti-heal. So, Guan Yu can't help them out with the healing. But aside from that, I like that Thor is going to be able to pick up, go wherever he wants. When we're looking at Jingwei and Neath, I know Fate and Bud Pop can kind of flip back and forth between roles. Honestly... I like Neath and Sylvanas, but I like Jingwei and Sylvanas more. I want Neath in the mid lane, so that way the ultimate isn't channeled that entire time. When you're using that ultimate from the mid lane with Neath, it's going to take a shorter amount of time, and you have a shorter reaction time. If you're perp skirt to react to that ultimate coming out from Neath, you're going to have to pop your relics early. There's a lot more room for mistakes. So that's why I want to see you there. It probably won't work that way, though. You know, I'm actually kind of thinking it's going to be Neath mid. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be Neath uh, over the Jing. And while Jing does have her passive to be able to get back to lane in no time, getting free backs, essentially, um, I'm kind of thinking Neath is going to be the pickier, having that uh, superior early game lane clear on Jingwei. Well, we're going to go ahead and pop into game real quick. We're going to get you this action here in just a second. Stay tuned for Team Weight versus Perp Skirp in the Battle for Valhalla 5v5 Smite Central Tournament. Stay tuned.
Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to round two of Smite Central's 5v5 Battle for Valhalla. Right now we're watching Perp Skirt versus Team Way. I am Bryce LPs and right now I have Tiger. On the left side of your spectator UI, bottom side of the minimap, we have Perp Skirt with Aqua Wayfinder on Guan Yu as your soul laner. Hank Hammerhands as on Thor as your jungler, Claw on Vulcan as your mid laner, and Aldemos and Denial River on Sobek and Huyi respectively as your dual lane. And on the right side of your spectator UI, sporting the red trunks, you have Team Way, Xenon Hawk on Robin in the solo lane, Cubic on Kabraken in the jungle, Fate on Neath in the mid lane, and Team Way already looking at the speed camp. Not even going to continue with here, Hank Hammerhands trying to use the spin to win to take it, but instead it's going to go to Cubic in the back line, but Xenon Hawk taking a lot of damage for his troubles. Cubic doing his best to body block, and with the slows, going to be able to do so for right now, but Team Way looking very low. Yeah, they do uh, get that buff, but a lot of damage has been put onto them, and Xenonhawk is in a bad situation here, as Talo Assault is going to secure that kill. First Blood going the way of Aqua Wayfinder. Oh, as Cubic! Oh, Cubic stays in and puts off damage, and the creeps actually finished him off there. Well, he found, a gr he found a great two-man stun, and instead of using that time to get away, he kept fighting, thinking he's going to be able to take both of them, but they were too low. They came down, invaded, now their buffs are completely open, and they gave first blood and the next kill to Perp Skirp. Yeah, and these, uh, these fire elementals are going to go the way uh, of Perp Skirp here, so... Uh, they're just going to be able to finally clear their buff. Losing that speed buff isn't going to be too big of a deal, especially after getting the first two kills of the game. I mean, they made it look so easy. They made it look like child's play coming through, and now that's going to just throw off Team Wave for the first couple of minutes of the game. They weren't able to secure their own buffs. They're very behind when it comes to Cubic. They're going to have to come back. They're finally going to be able to secure their own speed camp. Fate coming down to help them take it out. Meanwhile, over at the Mana Camp, Xenon Hawk level 3, a little bit better off. Going to be able to take that with the help of Cubic as well. But I ex definitely expect to see Perp Scrip try to take advantage of this with heavier rotations over to the right side, especially because they have hammer hands. Yeah, uh, hammer hands on that Thor is going to be able to do a lot of damage, but Aqua Wayfinder is actually fighting two people right now uh, under half health, but Cubic just takes so much damage from that Talo Assault. Aqua Wayfinder is going to be forced under his tower. He's got a lot in his kit, Cubic does, but right now he's just so squishy. He's got the Bumba's mask and he's got the boots, that's it. He's not that innately tanky Kabraken that we're used to because he's in the jungle. He's going to want to bring out as much damage. He's Fat Loki. He wants to just blow you up in a couple of hits and then run on, but that's not happening early game, which is what they're trying to do. Vulcan Ultimate coming through and Cubic going to fall Ooh. claw getting the kill. Beautiful. That was a great setup right there as uh, Fate is being jumped on, just a little bit of damage being thrown out. But Cubic's in a rough position here. On Kabraken, you want to be able to get off that uh, early damage and pick off some kills uh, in some of your lanes. But whenever you're so far behind like this, level 3, almost 3 minutes into the game, you're not going to have that damage and you're going to lose so much pressure around the map. He's going to have to focus on getting up to a level where he can apply some pressure. And Team Way had started out so strong. I like... Oh, there we go. Okay, Aqua Finder taking on Xenon Hawk once again. Gets soloed over in the solo lane. Juan, you gonna be able to heal right back up, clear these creep, absolutely no problem. They started strong, they had the strat, and they had that deep ward just to see what team or what Kerps Kerp were starting with. They put it down in that speed camp to see the actives and to see the items as well as the paths. But Perps Kerp taking these mini fire elementals gonna get a little bit of gold, but that really starts to add up. Oh, as Bud Pop will get the kill into the Nile River over in the dual lane. Cubic is now rotating over, and it looks like Sobek is going to be forced to run out. Uh, he's only level 4 is Cubic, but the double stun is going to come out. Bud Pop is going to secure that kill. Uh, Ademos is going to fall. Two kills falling for, uh, for Perp's group. Team Way has a chance with his dual lane. 
The pressure, Hank Hammerhand's coming down with the anvil of dawn. He misses the double taps, gonna get stunned, but Yumta not gonna be able to find the pull, and now the chase is on. Hammerhands can't go by the way of fate. It's gonna have to go down into the depths of his own jungle. Team Way gonna be able to form in this damage camp and then head right on over to the experience boars. They're just in mass, in numbers. You can't pick them off if they're not putting themselves in these type of situations. Yeah, this solo lane over here is going to be scary. Aqua Wayfinder is Guan Yu with the lead, and even though he's not going to be rotating soon, once he does start rotating, he's going to make a big impact. It does look like uh, his blue buff's almost being stolen away by Xenonhawk, and he's a little low on mana and health to be able to do anything about it. He's going to try and back, but Xenonhawk is going to be able to sniff it out and just keep up the pressure. He lost a lot when it came to lane. He's a little bit behind, but not too much. It's not... It's not detrimental for Team Way yet, as long as they keep doing what they're doing, putting on the pressure. But Perp Script going to do the same thing. It's going to be a nice wall. Xenonhawk already forced to use the kick. It's going to get him out of jail and out of damage. Xenonhawk stuck between three members and Hank Hammerhands going to fall. And then the beautiful body block from Sobek to keep Aqua Wayfinder in the game. It's always scary seeing that Neatho coming at you with while your team's around because you're like, please body block this, please body block this, and uh, <laughs> Perk's group is going to be able to do that as uh, my ranked teams are not. Cubic looking to just clear up this wave and uh, take some experience from the solo lane to be able to get himself a little bit back into this game after uh, getting that uh, double kill over there in the duo lane. As Xenohawk is going to rotate and put a lot of damage onto all Demos, he's getting very low here. Using that ultimate, just barely going to be able to make it out. Xenohawk using the ultimate too. Cubic Low Aqua Wayfinder's ultimate is coming out, and Cubic is going to get out of the range of the stun, just barely running away to the tower, and Cubic is going to make it out of that. Can we talk about that hot wrath stun coming out from Cubic just to save him a couple seconds time? Aqua Wayfinder trying to get rid of Xenonhawk, chasing him down, using that assault. As soon as he turns the corner and sees those two, he runs, but Aldemos cannot. Fate gets credit for the kill, bringing on another number, another statistic for Team Way. This lead is slowly starting to fall for Perp Script as Xenonhawk is actually oh, taking Xenon. a lot of damage. He stayed in, thinking he could do something. Aqua Wayfinder isn't going to hit the dash, but we do have Thor's ultimate coming out. Oh, but he missed the backing ultimate! Xenonhawk is low and more than likely is going to fall. Tallow Assault uh, is not up yet, but the hammer is going to secure that blue buff going to be stolen away. All you needed was a double tap, and that's exactly what he found. And he's just doing what Thor's supposed to do. Even though he didn't hit, he was still in front. So at that point, your immediate, re your immediate reaction is going to be to back off, which is exactly what Aldemos is doing from this mid-harpy mid camp on the left side. Team Way already have that locked down, sunk, padlocked, whatever you want to call it. It's gone in favor of the boys in red. Fate channeling that ultimate is going to soar through, looking to lock down that hoagie. He's so low, but nobody's there to follow up and the damage wasn't enough to take out denial river cubic just barely not able to get uh to now river one of the scariest moments is when you see a jungler uh ready to jump on you but now cubic is in a bad position uh we have hank hammerhands and claw trying to find him but couldn't catch him out the red buff is just going to be taken just looking for it, not going to be able to find it. Instead, going to head off, take your own buffs. Every little bit of your jungle counts. Team White want to stay in this game. They're only about 600 behind, which is pretty huge, considering Perp Script had about a four-kill lead earlier on. They're trying to make that bigger, though. Hank Hammerhand's going to have a beautiful wall to separate Claw, but it's not going to be enough as Fate takes it with the Spirit Arrow. Team Way going to go ahead and back off. They've got what they wanted, and you can't really lock down. You can't lock down Thor. Yeah, uh, Xenonhawk and Cubic might not have control of this uh, of this right side of the map here, but as soon as we saw uh, people coming over from the left side of the duo lane, uh, Fate and Yumta have just made a big impact, and now they're just able to take away the pressure that Perps Group had with this early lead. Teamway is slowly being able to uh, get themselves uh, back into this game with the gold lead being not even noticeable at this point, so it looks like Perps Group's going to have to Put out a little bit more pressure to make sure that Xenonhawk can't get into this game and pro probably shut down uh, that duo lane. I like the rotation coming out from Cubic. He heard from Xenonhawk. They almost, even though Xenonhawk is two levels down, he almost won that 
little spat, that 1v1 with Aqua Wayfinder. Cubic rotates over. He's not quick enough, though, and Xenal Hawk didn't go and interrupt the back. So instead, Cubic's going to miss out. He's forced to use a, he's forced to take a little bit of this experience from these minions and then back off. So these... I don't want to call them bad calls, but these missed opportunities are really bad for Cubic, who's 0, 2, and 0, just ding level 9 as I'm talking about him. He's the one suffering the most from this deficit, indeed, but uh, he's still Kabrakin, and once we get into this uh, later part of the game, where everybody's starting to kind of even out in the mid to late game, he's still going to be Kabrakin, and he's still going to be able to apply a lot of damage, so hopefully he can make his way back into this as the, as the little Gold Fury Dance is kind of starting up now, trying to get the ward coverage on it, while Hammer, Hank Hammerhands lost his hammer and is going to take over half of his health from Cubic, who is still only level 9. Getting absolutely chunked. We have to remember Hammerhands is also level 9, and there's not a lot of physical defense being built. The only one I'm seeing, Breastplate of Valor on Guan Yu coming through, and then a Breastplate with physical protection just being built onto the Sobek. But speaking of Sobek, using that ultimate, gonna charge down Yumta, waiting for the right opportunity, but only gonna chunk a little bit of his health, not even much at all. He's gonna get pinched off from the rest of his team, and Claw gonna get stuck in fate, once again racking up these kills. Hammerhands is in the air, but there's not really anywhere for him to go unless he wants to dunk down right on the experience camp with no follow-up. Yeah, Aqua Wayfinder has made his way over into the left lane. Yumta getting really low here. Who he's ultimate is going to come out. The Now River will pick up that kill onto Yumta, but now Cubic is trying to put in damage, taking a lot himself, though, is going to be forced out after that double tap. But Aqua Wayfinder is not giving up, getting that killing spree, getting the kill onto Cubic. The fight is still going. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. They're bobbing for apples here, coming out for Perp Scurp. Team Way, here he comes, jumping in, and Faye gonna be able to find it. And then Bud Pop charges through, but Denial River had kept that jump for exactly when he needed it. He didn't spend it. Team Way probably thought it was down. They had blood. They were looking for it. Couldn't able to, f weren't able to find it, but are gonna be able to strip everything out from Perp Scurp's jungle, at least. Perp Scurp is the worst team name to say in a team fight that I have ever come across. Oh, you think that, but there's, there's, there's a few other uh, a few other teams. I can't remember the exact name, but there was one that has at least seven words in it. So, that's even worse as we are looking at the mid lane over here. Claw taking a lot of damage and still being chased is going to get rooted out, but there is no follow-up. Utah going to take a bit of damage for his trouble, but nothing really worth mentioning here. As we are seeing, uh, a lot of pressure has been put into the jungle by Team Way after, you know, losing some of these fights, especially in the early game, uh, you know, they haven't been able to do much, but Utah. now they're coming back in. Yumta in the mid lane is uh, has that Sobek ultimate under him, is going to use the ultimate of his own, but is still taking a lot of damage as Claw is the one who's going to fall here. They need to keep track of Fate. Fate just waits in the back line and completely rips through all of their squishy characters. Cubic gonna get a double tap to the face. Wayfinder gonna be able to finish it off in the back line. And now, even though he's the only one here, he's able to charge through. He saw how much mana Xenonhawk had and took a chance. There's if if he hits me with this ability, fine. I'm gonna get stuck here for a second. But other than that, you're you're golden. He got away just fine. And now Perp Scurp, three kills up, gonna be able to rotate over to the Gold Fury. Yeah, more than likely going to be taken. The only one here to defend now uh, is Bud Pop, and there's four members for Perp Skirt here, so I don't think Bud Pop's going to be able to do too much. Still going in, but that pluck has come out. His dash hasn't been used. Perp Skirt is going to get that Gold Fury, and now Bud Pop's in a bad position with Aqua Wayfinder on his tail. Yumta rotating over, and the ultimate is going to be forced out, and he is going to make his way out. Airstrike's going to be down. Bud Pop is going to be able to get away. Yumta, I haven't really seen him hit a useful pull. He may maybe hit one or two, but that would have been very nice, but team way scattered. So even if he found the pull onto Aldemos, onto onto Denial River, there was no follow up. Instead, Denial or Team Way gonna put their stocks more in the mid lane. They want this three v three fight to lock down these mid harpies. The left one's gonna be coming up again and they have the timer on it. Yeah, uh, looking right now, it looks like there's a mid lane gank waiting to come through. Two people waiting in the jungle as Fate is just walking into two people. It's going to take a little bit of damage. That meatball is going to miss, and now Claw is the one who's going to get rooted out. Uh, the backflip is going to be able to save Fate, but it looks like Perp Script is going to have to get a pick on the Fate to be able to stop all the damage that he's been able to put out now. 
And that's very hard to do, especially with the relic use coming through. Fate still gonna be alive, not gonna see any any use coming out from that claw ultimate. Instead, he's gonna lose his life. Fate still stands. Hammer hands coming through, but Fate gonna be able to backflip out of the way. Ooh. Double tap gonna be able to take out Cubic, but he's looking very low himself on Hammer hands. The pluck gonna get him away from Hammer hands. Thor is gonna be able to get away. Aldemos using that not to get it closer to his teammates to try and blow him up, but further away to save. Just to save the day and save Thor some time. That was a hot double tap right there to secure, secure the kill on Cubic. Uh, Aqua Fight Wayfinder has rotated in the mid lane to see if he can pick up anything uh, as well as Denial River. But it looks like they are just going to back off Aldemos in a bad spot here with three people kind of chasing him out. He takes a shot in the butt, but nothing really bad going to happen as Xenonhawk is looking to take this tower over in Zola lane. So we've been talking about taking down Fate, but that is... Much easier said than done. Fate level 14, fully stacked transcendence. He's a god right now, literally and figuratively. And look at the levels of Perpscript. What are they going to be able to do against this Neath who's already ripping through them? One ability put Claw from 100 to 50. Yeah, it's going to be scary to try to deal with this, but if they can just... Let, let's just say, let's rotate all five members, you know? Let's just, let's just get Fate out of the way. Uh, but it looks like there's a little bit of engagement going on with uh, Zenhawk aggressing on the Aqua Wayfinder. And Zenhawk, while behind, is winning in this little engagement. He's kind of made his way back uh, into this game after losing his life twice at the beginning. It's the farm game. Xenon Hog been able to has been able to take some kill participation from the rest of the from the rest of the board, even though he's zero four and three, and he's been farming while Aqua Wayfinder's been a bigger part in these team fights. We haven't been we haven't talked much about Xenon Hawk when it comes to the fights, and I think that's why he's just been more concerned with Solo Island and getting farm everywhere else. Hammerhand's coming through, realizes that Xenon Hawk doesn't have a lot of mana. I'm not really sure what he was trying to get done here. That's going to be the Sanctuary popped. Hammerhand's is going to try to use his ultimate. That will be good. And then Neath ultimate coming through as well. And that's going to be what kills him. Another the kill. Dream. Another kill being thrown the way of fate as this tower on the soul side is going to be taken adding insult to injury there the Damn, uh, yeah. buffs being looked at and they are going to not be able to get anything but now they're looking to take the life of aqua wayfinder they're going to pinch him they're going to pinch him the kubik coming out on the back line he's looking for the stun going to find the root from xenon hawk a lot of damage and the tremors and aqua wayfinder already uses ultimate all he has is the assault and the heal but xenon hawk doesn't have enough mana so they're not going to be able to lock him down that's really unfortunate because that, that could have been a really hot play as aldemos is going to try to go in on kubik not going to hit anything and he's still going to keep chasing him taking a little bit of damage kubik telling them to leave him alone and you know, it was a nice attempt to try to kill Aqua Wayfinder, get him a little, a little dead there. But he's still a warrior, and he's still Guan Yu. He has that heal, he has that tankiness, and he is able to just get away. This uh, blue buff is going to be taken by Perpscurp, and Xenonhawk is going to be uh, looking to try to fight, but he isn't going to go ahead and back out while the rotation from three people to take the speed buff from Team Way. Cubic's got these two little angels on his shoulder. One says, go for Wayfinder. The other says, go for Claw. And he's been listening to the Wayfinder one this entire time, which has let up which has let up this Vulcan. He's level 15 now. He was a little bit behind earlier on, even though he was pumping out a lot of damage. And now Cubic is two levels above him. He's going to be able to use Superior CC to try and lock Claw down. But he really needed to do that earlier on because now Claw's going to hurt like nobody's business as Cubic is finding out now. It's going to be a nice knock-up Aqua Wayfinder going to be able to find Cubic, the one that's been taunting him for so long. Xenonhawk actually made his way, uh, made the rotation right there, tanking out Hank Hammerhands as Aldemos is taking a lot of damage, just barely dashing out of Sylvanas' ultimate there. Xenonhawk still aggressing, trying to see if he can do anything. Fate, the scary one here, could probably kill off a Wayfinder if he stays in a little bit too long. But the engagement is going to go ahead and back off. Jingwei still pushing that left side. That's the magical word. You say fate, and it's like Perpscurp can hear you and they back off that's why you see the rotation from the safe side going around the tower instead of heading back to that normal path they lost the tier one tower on the left side they lost the tier one tower on the right side so now their pathings have to be even more safe wards are very crucial right now because that's how people get picked off do you want to get picked off no as uh, this 
Tier 1 tower in the mid lane now is going to fall. Claw actually using his ultimate to clear the wave there, whether uh, on purpose or accidental. Uh, still cleared the wave, didn't get any damage off, but it was looking kind of scary with Xenonhawk and Claw addressing onto him. Luckily, Backfire, a decent move for escape as the Gold Fury is actually being done by Perk Script now, Fate rotating, and this is looking kind of scary. That's really unfortunate that Claw used his ultimate because they really could have used that to try and lock down this, lock down the Gold Fury. Aldemo's going to be able to lock down Bud Pop, and the fight continues on. Wayfinder using his ultimate, but the Gold Fury is going to get leashed. Xenon Hawk using the Mystic Rush into the back line, but Claw going to be able to find him with the Magma Bomb. Aldemos takes out Fate, and you can see Team Way completely scattered. Cubic just trying to get away, trying to save his life, at least lock down Claw in the process because of it, but is not able to find a single life. Four members of Team Wave falling right there, and the Gold Fury is just going to be hopped right back onto, and you know, the Yumtel could definitely try to stop this from being taken, but as Sylvanas, who's out of mana and low on health, that's not really going to happen. Gold Fury easily going to be going the way of Perp Skirp here. A great trade for them, pushing them super far ahead. Yep, so I want to see these graphs as soon as they come up. I'm going to flip to them myself. A little bit... the experience... I don't even want to talk about it because that doesn't matter. It's so low. It's the gold that we need to look at right now. Only 1,200. If it's less than 2,000, it's not a lead, in my opinion. You need a lot more than that. This, these teams are neck and neck. 16-11, we're 19 minutes and 50 seconds into the game. We're pushing the wire for that 20-minute mark. And Perp Skirp, through all of this, have only been able to amass a 1,300 gold lead on the back of a Gold Fury. Other than that, it's been still very close with Team Way at top. Yeah, well, that gold lead, or uh, well, the gold isn't necessarily a lead right now. Uh, the momentum is definitely in the way of Perks Group. Uh, while Fate is still kind of a very big factor, Perks Group has been working a lot more as a team, whereas Team Way has been kind of these individual units who have been. Uh, putting out a lot of damage and getting their own individual plays off as Claw is being looked at in the mid lane. I talked about this with the ABGL casters and they came up to high res and we got to cast in that try cast with these teams. Sometimes you get teams that are five really good players and are just playing like really good players and then you get these five people that play as a team. That's what I'm seeing out of perp script right now which is surprising because somebody told me they had two subs. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I actually am not sure uh, who the subs are, not too familiar with these teams now, but if there are two subs, they're actually playing fairly well as uh, a lot of people, four people, are rotating over to this uh, left side to be able to try to take this red buff for a life as Denial River is the one who took a decent amount of damage there, is going to go ahead and jump out to make sure he does not fall. The only thing I don't like about Perp Skirp, aside from that Gold Fury, they're playing very reactive. It's Team Way that are making these big plays, making these things happen that are causing them to react. Yumta taking a lot of damage, forced to use that ultimate, but he's going to get caught between the wall and Claw and Denial going to take him out. Cubic going to get a little bit of a revenge kill, but Fate going to find Aqua. Fate going to find Hammer Hands for the double kill. The only one that's fallen in that fight for them is Yumta. So now they're going to turn. Nice stun onto Aldemos. And that's all she wrote. And like that, the momentum that I mentioned earlier has instantly shifted into the favor of Team Way. The Fire Giant is going to be rushed down now with all five members of Perp Skirp being decided. Uh, now Team Way is going to get this Fire Giant for free and they're going to be able to regroup and take some of these objectives off the map. Sometimes, I mean, it's not often, but sometimes you got these these teams, like we mentioned, that play just like five really good players, but sometimes their skill is just a little bit better than the team. It's going to be up to Perp Script to step up and prove people wrong. Just because Team Way able to find that D aside, find these big plays, and force Perp Script to react, it's going to get to the point that with the map control that Team Way has had throughout the majority of this game, after they recovered from that first blood and then the first four kills going to Perp Skirp, it's going to be up to Perp Skirp. They're going to have to fight Team Way. And so far, that's not been working out for them in the late game. They're going to have to fight them to get their experience. They're being pigeonholed, and that's exactly what Team Way want. Yeah, if Perp Skirp can get a pick and make these team fights a little bit stronger in their favor, they'll definitely have more of a chance. But with Fire Giant and the way that the fights have been going, Team Way is definitely in the uh, in, in an advantageous state right now. As they are kind of spread out throughout the map with this Fire Giant, I'm expecting them to group up and start pushing down one of these lanes 
And that's when Perp Scrub's really going to have to start doing something, unless they can get a pick while everybody's scattered. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised, because they are scattered. They're like cockroaches. You turn on the light, and they're gone. They're on all sides of the map. The only two that are relatively close to each other are Yumta and Fate. And Fate doesn't need a babysitter. Fate's level 20. Fate is absolutely chunking. I want to see player damage coming out from Fate, too. Hold on one second. I see the ultimate coming through. You can hear it, and Bug Pop going to be able to find Denial River with the help of that Neath ultimate. And all of a sudden in the jungle, another team fight is breaking out as Aqua Wayfinder is trying to put damage onto Fate, but he himself is out of position as Xenhawk isn't going to do anything his left side is going to be looked at now. The tower is more than likely going to fall, especially now that the team fight is way in the favor of Team Way. And, and I love the fact, sorry, I love the fact that they're choosing the left side, that there is definite stock in making sure that you take down everything on the left side first, because when you take down this phoenix, the fire minions are going to be pouring in on the opposite side of the fire giant. You're going to be forced to put more stock into the left side, while the enemy team can go and take out the objective once again. They want to take it out, just like they're going to take away Aqua Finder as well. He's going to be gone, and now the pressure is on. Cubic looking for the stun, using the ultimate, going to be able to find claw in the process the only thing that kept hammer hands alive is the teleport and the fight still stands aldemos just got stuck between five members of the enemy team the phoenix is going to fall over on the left side Nile river is going to be uh, try to be jumped on but hey hey hammer hands taking so much damage while his ultimate is going to have to go back into his fountain Yep, he's going to ult right back into that fountain middle phoenix is going to be taken as team way is looking to end the game Get dunked on. They're going to come around the corner. There's nothing that Perp Script can do. There's so much damage coming out from Team Way. We even saw the Wrath just for a little bit of extra damage. Titan already down to half. Bud Pop taking a good chunk of damage, but Hammerhand's not going to get anywhere close enough to try and end it. That's going to be game. Team Way taking it 17 to 20 in 15 minutes and 10 seconds. 25 minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Dream. Yeah. I saw 15 from Hammerhand's with his level. <laughs> well, wow. that was a great game, honestly. It was going so back and forth. Perf Script had that early advantage, getting two kills, but all of a sudden the dual lane kind of took off and the mid lane took off, and every other part of the map was getting ahead so far. And the solo lane kind of started making his way back in, getting some rotations, getting up, getting some kills, getting some nice pressure going on around the around the map, and Perf Script couldn't match that. That was all fate. That was all fate. Cubic had a rough start. Xenon Hawk had a rough start. We didn't talk about Yumta or Bud Pop until halfway through the game. It was fate. That entire game, 8, 1, and 9. His player damage, 18,000. Bud Pop came close in the end, and that's what Team Way wanted, was to build these ADCs up and just let them go absolutely crazy. They went crazy on players, they went crazy on objectives, and that's, that's perfectly fine. But they couldn't lock down Fate. We talked about Fate, 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 and there was nothing Perp Skirp could do. They locked him down once that game, and that team fight was when Team Way scattered. And Perp Script were able to take an, you know, able to take a little bit of a lead, maybe one or two towers or an objective. But aside from that, the momentum was all Team Way. Yeah, and their builds too, uh, definitely complemented the way that they were playing. Fate was the one who got Brawler's beat stick to almost void uh, Guan Yu's healing. There, he wasn't really uh, doing too much. We also had a pestilence coming out. Uh, the healing, the sustain, wasn't really a factor because. Not only was there not enough time between these fights, Perp Script was just getting bursted down. They weren't getting poked. Normally we don't have normally we don't see teams build the anti heal in enough time. But Neath, Fate, bringing on that Brawler's Beast Stick, we saw the Pestilence coming out from Robin early on for the fourth item and third item, respectively. And that's, I think, what really hurt Aqua Wayfinder because Aqua was in these team fights, and Xenonog, once he jumped in, we we just saw a we just saw that healing dip, and Wayfinder wasn't as big of a presence anymore as he was in the very early to mid game. He was bullying Xenon Hawk on that Robin, but that didn't happen because they built the anti heal on time, which I can't say anything that nice about the SCL or SPL teams. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because they definitely do not build it early enough. Yeah, I, I feel yeah, I feel yeah. Aqua Wayfinder only being able to put out 4,000 healing as compared to 5,600 coming out from Utah, who wasn't even that big of a factor in the game. 
Well, thank you so much for letting me come and guest cast with Bryce. Thank you, Smite Central. You are watching the Smite Central 5v5 Battle for Valhalla tournament brought to you by Discord and other sponsors that I am not aware of. Bryce, take it away. <laughs> yeah, you can check out our sponsors, Discord. It gives us this uh, sweet partnered server with features that we definitely appreciate to be able to have better voice quality. Make sure you check out Loot Tracker with the giveaways for Smite and many other things. You can get some PC parts on there because Smite doesn't run too well on my computer. Probably doesn't run too well on some of yours. And make sure you check out Gamer Subs, uh, Gamer Supplements. Having those energy supplements for you uh, lazy gamers out there. Yeah, I, I can't say I'm not one of you, but. Yeah, make sure you check them out and uh, see if you can get something. Make sure you use the code SMITE Central for your discount. Next round coming at you here in just a little bit. Stay tuned for more SMITE action. Thank you. 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the semi-finals of Smite Central's 45 Battle for Valhalla. I am Bryce LPs, and with me here, I have J-Mac. How you doing, J-Mac? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be here on Smite Central for, I guess I could say, my official debut, considering the last time did not go so well for me. Yeah, last time you kind of lagged out and left me to solo cast that uh, that Joust game. Thanks, buddy. Ah, no, but, problem, uh, no problem. But, we got but this. Right now it's uh, RZ Killers versus Meatball Windows, and we're a little late to getting in on this, so you can already see uh, most of the picks. We I don't have the bands on my screen. I don't think we have them. But I guess I'll go ahead and uh, say who's on what team. RZ Killers has Alquan on her, Sobek, and Agni, as well as Guan Yu. Whereas Meatball Windows has Vimana, Rama, Ra, Athena, and Mercury. Huh. Mer did, that's yeah, uh, uh, Mercury you don't normally see uh, in an actual game of Smite. No, ever since the removal of the Golden Bow, Mercury has kind of just been this non-existent god. I mean, I've only seen him really a couple of times since his removal, and that's really only been in the Oceanic region uh, of some of the recent games I've been watching of theirs, but... Mercury, I'm not sure how he's going to do it in this. He does have a decent team to protect him. He has the raw for the sustain. He has Mojo Cat. We all, uh, we at the AVGL love and know uh, Mojo Cat, who's going to be back in his natural role of support this time on Athena. So he's got a great team to support him. The problem is it's going to take him such a long time to get to that late game where Alquang's going to get there a little bit faster, and he's really going to be a, probably a little bit more impactful unless Mercury can get those strong sonic booms in the end. Yeah, if he can get those off, and if he can get some nice ganks off, which, uh, you know, the Mercury ganks, which are, are they're kind of like charge your ultimate halfway, walk out from behind uh, the walls, and then be in the tier 1, and then ult halfway down the lane and stun somebody, that's kind of how the ganks work. If he can get these off, then uh, he can definitely make an impact in this game. Uh, but if not, he's just going to be completely outclassed by Alquang, who is, uh, you know, in my opinion far superior to somebody uh, like Mercury. Whereas, looking at the solo lane matchup, we actually have Guan Yu versus Vimana, which is uh, good for both of them. Both have kind of kill potential if they do decide to stick around and fight. Luckily, Guan Yu can clear the wave without getting uh, stunned out, or, you know, he can't be knocked up, so luckily his Talo Assault will not be interrupted like I love to do whenever I'm playing Naja solo. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, really the Guan Yu is picked up as the counter healer to the Raw. Whenever your one team has a healer, you want to try and get the other team for a healer if possible. Usually that's what, done with either a Terra or a Sylvanas has really come back into the meta recently. A lot of the pros are starting to pick Sylvanas back up. Uh, mostly just because of the crazy stuff that Eager has been running. But <laughs> Guan, Yu, Guan Yu against Vamana is going to be kind of a stalemate. Vamana's going to have a little bit of the early win, but once Guan Yu kind of gets that third rank into Talo Assault, he's going to be able to clear it just fine. He's going to be able to even heal up the wave just a little bit against Vamana. Kind of one of the things that you kind of hate going against with sustained gods <laughs> like this is they just heal the wave back up. Guys, look, I almost killed all the minions with my... Oh, never mind. All right, let's try this again in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be kind of the name of the game here. We're going to have to see Antio coming out. I'm expecting to see a Divine Ruin uh, on Elpa Dog here with that Agni, who's a very decent applier of that with his bombs or even his Noxious Fumes. Whereas we might see like a Brawler's Beat Stick come out from Mercury, give him that extra pen, and make his uh, make his major look a little bit more useful. But with that, we're going to go ahead and take a short break before we cut into the game. So we will see you guys in just a bit.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the semifinals of uh, Spite Central's Battle for Valhalla. And uh, it looks like there's a little bit of taunting going on, a little bit of uh, poke damage being thrown out before we can even actually get into this game. But I am Bryce LPs, and with me here, I have J Mac Tucker. But it is RZ Killers versus Meatball Windows. On the left side of your Spectator UI, bottom side of the minimap, we have RZ Killers. The game is paused with Atmo on Guan Yu as your solo laner, Grave on Alquang as your jungler, Elpa Dog on Agni as your mid laner, and ZDRU and Harver on Sobek and on her respectively as your duo lane. Yep, and it's going to be Zerk 40 U or Zekker 40 UI on the Vamana solo lane. Aquas piloting the jungle. Mercury, Sir Bomberman on that Raw in the mid lane. And Mojo Cat and Risky Ace teaming up for the duo lane, Athena and Rom. The, the game is still paused here. I was kind of hoping that it would, uh, it would stop while we were introducing. Ah, no big deal. No, no, big, no big deal on that. We may have a little bit of long pause, but it gives us a little bit of time to kind of talk about what we see here at the moment. Wrath on Sobek. I dig it. I dig it. Uh, you know, you get that You get that early clear. You get it pretty fast. I mean, this is solo back, so you want to try to get in lane and get that pressure. Wait. Oh, this, this is solo back. I introduced the team wrong, team's wrong. I did not look at it correctly. I apologize. It's actually Atmo as Guan Yu support and ZDRU as solo back. So, uh... He has Mark the Vanguard to go up against Ramana. He's go he's not going to have that great of wave clear compared to Ramana in the uh, early levels, but he's going to be able to hold his own with his, his tankiness with Mark of the Vanguard and Wrath. Might just get him into lane to give him some pressure. Yeah, and because of the lack of clear, as you mentioned, from the Sobek, that's kind of one of the reasons why they picked up the Wrath, is so that they can counteract his weak early clear, especially in the jungle. He doesn't have... His base damage is fairly low. His scaling is where, really where Sobek comes to shine. As just about all Guardians, they have immense scaling when it comes into the late game. Ymir, Athena, all gods like that. They have crazy scaling, but picking up that Wrath is going to allow him to get to lane almost on par with Mercury Vamana as they're going to have a very easy time clearing, and it's going to allow him to secure his blue buff a little bit easier because while it's fun watching gods like Sobek and Hades auto-attack a buff camp for 20 minutes, <laughs> <laughs> we kind of want to get to see a little bit more action from those ones. So Soulstone's picked up by both the mid laners. I really don't see any reason not to pick up this starter item for a mid lane mage. Yeah, and looking at the uh, relics right here, there's one person on the map kind of chilling at that speed buff for Meatball Windows. Zekker not picking up his first relic, it looks like. Maybe uh, waiting, thinking, maybe I don't need to go into teleport. Maybe I can get that early, uh, early lane advantage and not have to get it and get more of an aggressive or a defensive relic. It's kind of something we used to see a lot is, whenever relics first became a thing, is people wouldn't pick up People wouldn't pick them up until uh, they had to back, like uh, soul laners wouldn't do that. They'd wait to get their teleport just in case they didn't have to. And it looks like Zekker might be going for that right now. Yeah, I mean, that's a strategy that I've kind of been pitching for a long time, is if you know you're going to go into teleport, or if you're not even sure if you need to go into teleport or not, holding off on that relic is probably a better option than just straight out picking up the teleport. Because if you don't need the teleport in your first, you know, five to nine levels, why even pick it up? He might even say, hey, I don't need teleport. My opponent's going for Wrath, so that means I can go for Wrath. And then maybe he can pick up teleport later on in the game. And I actually think this might be one thing that Zekker does go for, is he might either do the Wrath Curse or the Teleport Curse start. It just kind of depends on how his early laning phase goes. Yeah, uh, looking around... Other than that, we don't really have any uh, anything too strange coming out. We do have the sprint uh, on the way of Guan Yu as the game is finally going to be on pause. Oh, thank you. The sprint it's a it's a very aggressive or defensive. It has the it has that diversity in the duel lane where either you can aggress onto your opponents by sprinting after them if they get low, or you can sprint away just in case you get low. And they're gonna have that at the ready. And uh, I was kind of hoping for an invade to come out, maybe jump on this Mercury, or maybe Mercury jump onto somebody else, see if he can take out this Alphong early, you know? But it didn't, it didn't exactly happen. No, nah, I mean, but with the Wrath, that would have given the option for them to maybe start at the enemy blue buff. I mean, that's a strategy that we've seen by some players is, I've got Wrath, you don't, we're going to take your blue buff, or we might take your speed buff as... 
Sir Bomberman looks like he might actually be lagging out here. Yeah, I think I think Sir Bomberman was lagging out because he was kind of walking away from Elpa Dog there. Yeah, a little unfortunate. Uh, the game is going to be paused. Mojacat going to go ahead and throw that out as uh, we, we have a little bit of difficulty. Sir Bomberman did get his red buff, and luckily, luckily is at least in the lane, and they're throwing out that pause to make sure he doesn't have the back because if you don't get these first few waves, no matter what lane you're in, you are going to be having such a bad time going throughout this. And uh, as we mentioned, RZ killers are going to be able to make it two lane first it not by uh, an incredible margin but if they didn't have that wrath they'd probably still be auto attacking the camp right now so this is at least going to get them into the lane on time to not lose any experience if they can uh, make it out get these ellies get these mid camps and uh, see what they can do yeah i mean when it comes to the wave sobek is going to be very weak up until he pretty much gets level eight level nine where he can nearly full clear with the sickening strike and then use the tail whip to finish it off there that's kind of that's kind of the thing with sobek is you don't pick him to win a lane you don't pick him to even to even out the lane you kind of just pick him to be there and to be the frontline guardian when it comes into the later portions of the game obviously with the support Guan Yu, these two roles were interchangeable and i think that's another reason why zekker didn't necessarily go for that relic early. He didn't know who he was going to face. He didn't know if it was going to be Sobek. He didn't know if it would be Guan. So he didn't know if he needed to go curse, teleport, wrath, whatever it may be. As uh, the game is finally unpaused yet again, uh, Elpa Dog is rotated to help secure these Ellies as uh, the fastest gun in the game is going to make his way. Is this, this is the patch for Mercury's fast again, right? Yeah, this is now Tuesday. The patch did come out yesterday, so Mercury is now the fastest god alive at 381 movement speed, this god. So maybe Aqua's giving him a try to see if the extra six movement speed on Mercury is going to make that much of a difference. Who knows? We'll see how this game goes. As the mid camps on the right side were taken by Team RZ, the ones on the left by Meatball. Aqua's going to get a good little fling onto Grave there, but Grave is already level four. Where Sir Bomberman is level two, uh, having some very sh uh, difficult lag right now, is seeing him kind of teleport around the map a little bit. Uh, over in the soul lane, uh, not too much aggression is coming out. The lane is kind of uh, being cleared, not necessarily evenly. It was almost like that at first, but this is still Vamana, and he's going to be able to make sure that uh, ZDRU isn't able to stay in there too much, even with Sobek sustain. Yeah, I mean, he does have that ultimate for when the blue buff does fall off. He can just drop into the lurk in the waters, get that extra mana sustain. It's 40% of your mana brought back. Um, and as far as health sustain, he does have that mark of the vanguard to kind of help him out. And at this moment, as I said, he's not going to have the strongest wave clear. Is going to fling back Zekker, who has just hit level 5. He's going to try and keep these minions from hitting the tower if possible, but is kind of expending a lot more potions than he'd probably like to at this point. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. Uh, you know, having that Sovex solo against somebody who has such great clear, like Bamana. But once he starts getting into these, uh, the, the, the later parts of the game, he's, he's going to be tanky. And he's going to have the CC and damage to be able to put out, staying in the solo lane uh, kind of build and the, the kind of play style you would expect to see. But Zekker, with this early, uh, early clear, is going to be able to rotate, but he is going to find two other people uh, at those fire elementals, and is going to be forced to dash out instantly, as it looks like over the left side, we have Mercury Aquas charging his ultimate, being ready to go on to that duel lane, is going to hit Guan Yu, who's taking a lot of damage, still has that dash, but, and uses his spirit to try and get out of there, it, and is going to get far away to make it out. Yeah, nobody really cut off the path of Atmo there. He was kind of able to just walk away for free. Normally when somebody goes into the jungle, you have, you know, three, four people split up the pathings they're going to take. But because Meatball brought everybody over into that duo lane and Vamano, the only one not because he's over farming in solo, there was no way to cut him off. So it was just the expending of the Sonic Boom for the sprint. Sonic Boom's going to come up on a, a little bit shorter of a cooldown there, only 90 seconds versus, you know, the 150, 106 seconds on sprint. So they're going to probably look to re-engage onto this lane pretty soon. But honestly, a little bit sloppy of an engagement. They just kind of Sonic boomed in there and really didn't have any kind of follow-up for it. Yeah, it was looking all right up until they were spotted out because, um, unfortunately, Aquas did stop charging his ultimate the first time and then started charging it again. And that is a loud clap whenever you first start charging it. It, uh... 
you know, you can hear him from at least a couple miles away. Same with Thor Ultimate. So whenever he stopped and kind of gave him away with that audio cue, they did. They lost a lot of the element of surprise that they had. But now uh, it looks like RZ Killers is going to maintain control of the map and this experience as they've been doing since the other game. Yeah. Um, Harder right now is sitting pretty low in mana over in the dual lane. Is just gonna farm with this last wave, and it looks like he's gonna go ahead. Probably back from here. Grave making a rotation, but there are three people there. The meditation has been popped from Athena, and that's the power of Al Kwong's just gonna be able to use that water illusion and get out of that no problem. Yeah, I'm still surprised uh, with Al Kwong being in this game. You haven't, I haven't seen him played in a while. As Zekker is forced into that ultimate right there, four members of RC Killers have come to this. Uh, for this rotation, but luckily Zerk, uh, Zekker is going to be able to just uh, pop his ultimate and walk on out as the big baby does. Not too many engagements coming out, being five minutes in this game, and uh, no kills. The gold is fairly even on both sides, and you know, every lane is kind of uh, evened out at this point. Yeah, I mean, with the lack of early game aggression, even with Sir Bomberman kind of taking that little early game spill as far as his uh, lag was going there, he's only sitting about two, not even 200 gold behind his opponent at the moment, which for the position he was in isn't too bad. Um, he has currently disconnected at the moment, so he's just going to be slowly dropping behind Elpa Dog, and it's not the best position that you want your raw. He, he's kind of your late game sustainer. He's what's going to negate out what Atmo is going to do on that Guan Yu, so... We'll see how that goes into the game. Hopefully, he'll be coming back in here pretty soon. But um, I'm not sure. Is there is is there a pause limit with uh, Smite Central? Ooh, I, uh, I, yeah, there there is a pause limit, and I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Meatball Windows has reached it. So okay. uh, I'm I'm not sure if they're going to be able to wait. But Sir Bonman has made his way back in. Hopefully, his lag will start clearing up pretty soon. Even with being behind, though, Raw is a god who can play his role even when behind. He can sit in the back lines as long as nobody jumps on him and he has proper peel. He can sit in the back line, throw out, has, throw out his damaging abilities, and keep healing. So if he just focuses on doing that and doesn't try to make any uh, too hot plays, then they'll definitely be good. I'm expecting this Gold Fury to be kind of the first point of major contention as Sir Bomberman is going to lag his way all the way out of that damage from RZ Killers. <laughs> wow, he just moonwalked right on out of there. Hey, I mean, that's like when you, when uh, the three of us, you made sure used to play Raw Hall all the time. You're like, how did you get out of that? It's like, oh, I hit my lag switch, man. <laughs> 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 no, but Sir Bomberman able to make it out of that one. Sitting currently two levels behind at the moment, but that's just because he missed a full wave and part, uh, and also some back camp rotations with the mid lane. There's a lot of places that you have to farm up. There's the mid lane, there's the back camps, there's the mid camps, there's the red buff and the speed buff, likely not the blue buff or the boars. Those are kind of just for those side lanes and the supporter jungler. Um, but there's there's basically five, six, seven points of contention for a mid laner. And if you miss one full rotation of those, or even a part of a rotation of that, it puts you so far behind. And that's why mid lane is honestly one of the more annoying and one of the more difficult lanes to kind of be in is because there's so many points of experience that you need to be there for. Or if you miss one, it kind of throws you that much further behind. Grouping up here into the mid lane. Mojo Cat's gonna get a two man taunt, but it's gonna get two bombs in return. And Grave gonna get the first blood for the game. Aquas comes in with a sonic boom. Grave comes smashing down. Servo Man a little bit late on the ultimate. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I'm sure he probably was lagging too hard to be even to even know where to <laughs> aim it. Uh, Atmo almost got killed there with a pretty decent counter initiation coming out from Aquas. Uh, Sir Bomberman currently making his way uh, through every single part of the lane at once. Is going to take a decent amount of damage, and Grave is going to jump on him, put a lot of damage, oh. but that you know may have just saved him. Yeah, J, J Mac, have you ever seen Wreck-It Ralph? Um, I have seen Wreck-It Ralph. Actually, it's a very good movie. Uh, you, you know the glitch? <laughs> yes, but, every... <laughs> that is what Sir Bomberman is. That, that was my obligatory Kanye reference, by the way, but um, that, that is what Sir <laughs> Bomberman is right now. He is currently the glitch, kind of just teleporting all throughout the map. He just needs to learn how to control it, man, and all of a sudden he'll become like the main character of the game, you know? But in all seriousness, uh, it's, it's a little unfortunate for him to have this lag he's he's he has it really bad watching him and uh hopefully meatball windows will be able to make their way back into this game especially with alquam be the one to get the first blood at eight minutes into the game 
if there's anybody here who can vouch for how bad lag can be, I think it's me. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think amongst everybody I've ever talked to, lag is more than anything just so destructive for me. And watching Sir Bomberman's like just looking at my past here. <laughs> As he teleports throughout the towers, Graves going to get taunted. And a nice little major look from Aqua is going to put a little bit of poke onto him. But they do have Atmo there for the sustain. And when it comes down to it, if Sir Bomberman is not able to really stop the lag that's happening with him, it's going to put his healing much further behind on the Guan Yu. Another major look is going to come out and hit Grave, But it's going to be negated once again by the Guan Yu heal. Sir Bomberman missed the wave with his uh, clear right there as uh, a little bit of, of aggression is going to be thrown away. Grave, who is under half health now, is going to luckily have that sustain coming out from Atmo, who, you know, I kind of appreciate Guan Yu in the support role more so than the solo lane because he's able to rotate and fulfill his role earlier than uh, normal as Atmo is going to regress, pop the ultimate and immediately stop as we do see Sonic Boom coming out. Grave taking a decent amount of damage is invisible, so will not, uh, he will take a little bit of damage from two Rama Snipes. The sprint has been popped. Uh, uh, Sir Bomberman is going to throw out that ultimate, but uh, unfortunately he's still a little... Little laggy that lag switch has uh, backfired on him and has started to bug out. So it's a, it's a rough life. Second relics coming online for the hunter of Team RZ as well as both the solo laners. They've hit their level twelves, and it's a curse coming out from Vamana and the teleport coming out from Sobek to match the teleport from okay. Vamana. So so Zekker did go for it, but the Gold Fury is up, and the Gold Fury has been taken. Meatball is going to get this one for free. Nobody was there. I mean, Agni was at was looking at the mid camp at the time. Honor was the only one who even remotely sniffed it out there. Great Todd's gonna come on to Epla Dog, but he's gonna or Elpa, the Elpa, Elpa, yeah, Elpa, uh, Elpa, uh, El, yeah, Alpha, no Alpha, man, it's Alpha. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, Aqua's gonna walk away from his speed buff at the moment because the tier one tower is up. Debatably, the only god in the game who I would say 100% needs the speed buff more than anybody else. And in fact, it's actually being invaded on here at the moment. Grave is looking at it. Major Look is going to secure it, but just barely. Zekker is going to come charging in with the Athena ult and to the curse onto Grave. That cavalry well, charge is going to land onto three. Server Bomberman is going to get the snipe onto Grave. Lag switch has been deactivated. Whoa. I mean, uh, not really, but he definitely no. <laughs> got the ultimate there. Surprised that he actually hit somebody with that. Uh, Grave will be the one to fall, but the uh, speed buff was not secured by Major Lift. It was secured by Grave, who got that. He got that speed buff. Oh, it looks like that... the, it, no, no. Aquas has the speed buff on him. The Major Look was what secured it there. Aquas got that this one. This map lied to me, man. <laughs> no, I, I mean. You know, sometimes it's a little awkward there as ZDRU has paused the game. Atmo at the has DC'd. So, There's Atmo. there. Yo, it looks like Sir Bomberman has figured out how to use his lag switch <laughs> and has properly targeted somebody on the enemy team and not on himself. Atmo <laughs> going to be the one to DC here. Sir Bomberman still in the game. Uh, after getting that snipe, he's like, all right, guys, I've trolled long enough. I am going to make my way back into this game. And, uh, this is uh, there's been a lot of pauses this game, huh? You you expect there to be just a little bit less pauses, but let's go ahead and take a look at the builds here. As I said, uh, in the picks and band phase, Elpa has picked up that divine ruin to counter Raw's healing. So, and he is going to be able to counter the healing onto Zekker as well as the game is going to go ahead and start back up. Atmo has made his way back in. Now, Guan Yu is really fast, Atmo. He has Teloria and Wingblade as his wow. first two items. Whereas, uh, you know, the fastest guy alive has a little bit of speed going his way with, uh, you know, Masa Moon, but that's only 10% as compared to everything that Guan Yu gets out of those two items. Yeah, but this is a really strong item on Mercury because he's kind of like Hebo. He's just kind of, well, where Hebo is wet paper, he's, uh, he's just like rice paper in this case, where <laughs> Mercury doesn't have a lot of health. He's probably the squishiest assassin in the game. And Masamun gives you more power per health that you have less than your opponent. For every, as it says here, for every every 10 health difference, you can get, you get one power for it, maximum 50. So because Mercury is so squishy and he's going to be fighting gods like Guan Yu, Sobek, on her doesn't have the most health, but and we probably won't see him pick any up, but we might see some kind of health out of either 
the uh, the Agni or the Al Kuang. He's going to have a lot less HP, and so he's going to get more power on top of the 10% movement speed, and is currently going into the Shuriken, which I assume is going to be the Wind Demon here. That's going to give him increased movement speed for any crit that he gets. He doesn't, he doesn't really care so much about the attack speed. It's the movement speed that he's going to be getting the bonus for there. Over so. in the duo side, uh, Risky Ace is going to be forced into the air, but Harbor is the one in a bad position now, as uh, he's going to be forced to use that Sanctuary. Four people are here, but the sprint has been popped onto him. Or is it Robert Man? He gets another snipe with that lag. How are you doing this, dude? What? Yeah, this, this dude needs to teach me how to do this, man. I, I think I just need to play raw when I lag, and I'll hit everything in existence, but... No, uh, going down into that one, Mojo can actually get to go up into the ultimate. He's going to come crashing down onto Vamana, and they're going to try and make a two-man gank over onto ZDRU, who has taken this tower. The taunt is going to catch him out of the charge prick, but the question is, do they have enough damage to take him down? The tail whip is going to separate them. The curse is going to be popped out, but the lurking in the waters is going to make sure that he can get away from them. In fact, he's going back in. He's going to try and put a little poke onto that. Mojo Cat's going to take the sickening strike. It is going to be flung. Back, but he's going to be slowed down by the umbrella rank and the taunt you. back into it. ZRU, you may have a mistake. I, actually, I don't know. That was a good tail. No, the Sonic no. Boom is going to come through and Aqua's going to get the credit for the kill. ZDRU made a big mistake there. He's like, you know what? I made it out of that life. You know what I should do? Go back in. He goes back in. And uh, he loses his life to a rotation. He, he may have lived there. Uh, Zekker was rotating in, or er, uh, dashing in rather, and he may have uh, caught him out. But there was a high chance that uh, ZDR you could have made it. Aquas, however, with a great sonic boom, securing that kill. So I'm kind of wondering, looking at the Alcon build, how do you feel about the uh, Spear of Magus as opposed to something along the lines of Obsidian Shard or even waiting for something as strong as Spear of Desolation? I'm a little curious about it, actually, that you mentioned that there, because normally Obsidian Shard is the go-to option, but it's looking like Grave wants to utilize the dragons more than anything, and with each hit of the dragon is going to reduce those protections by a flat 15, which is going to give him, in, in addition, more power, kind of going against the, not really even the lack of magical defense. I mean, we have the Bulwark of Hope from um, Zekker, and then we also have Mojo Cap with the Heartward Amulet at the moment, so I'm it's really interesting that he go into the Spear of the Magus over the Obsidian Shard, which is going to give him more tower pressure, it's going to give him more objective uh, damage like that, but I don't know, we'll see how it works out for Gravehair going into it. I would, as you said, I would have liked, you know, maybe wait for the Spear of Desolation, but that's a very, very harsh luxury item that you have to wait into. Gold Fury, however, being looked at here at the moment is something that Grave was picking that up for, being able to utilize those dragons. Five members on this left-hand side are trying to collapse onto Bomberman. Two men stun out from Atmo, and Sir Bomberman has been erased from existence. Pluck is going to go on to Zekker, who's going to be ulted by Mojo Cat, chasing down Grave. Purification already forced, and Grave, I don't think you're making it out of this one as the uh, Rom Snipes are coming out, and is going to finish him off. Risky Ace showing off his J-Marvels. As we do see the three-man taunt coming out from Mojo Cat here, it's going to make a little bit of a difference as Zedru is going to take some damage, but it's four against four here. The sustain is coming out uh, from one team, but the sustain of the other team team has died. Sir Bomberman, Bomberman is fallen, but the Gold Fury is now starting up as there are still people here. Zedru going to fall really quickly, but Zekker is also going to fall. The two solo laners both taking a little dive right there, and uh, it looks like the Gold Fury is going to be backed off. Both teams understand that they probably can't get it too safely. And so, you know, a pretty good trade coming that way. Uh, getting getting Zekker off the map, who is level 15, it, that's going to be pretty decent. Even with Zedru being ahead, making sure Vomana doesn't get into that late game is always a very, a very nice benefactor at the very least. Yeah, more than anything, Zedru has been getting the experience farm, but Zekra has been getting the gold farm because they're they're right there. They're within 60 or so gold of each other. Not even 100 gold separates these two solo laners. And it's crazy to see that considering it's a Vamana versus a Sobek. Vamana, as we mentioned, has a very strong early game pressure. He's able to push that way very quickly within just three to four levels where Sobek kind of takes a little bit of time to get online. Another fight over here at the Gold Fury. They don't want to let this one go. Mojo Cat only gets a taunt on the Grave, but has no purification, but is able to water Illusion out thanks to the CC from F Flip Dog. The Mo Dog was going to get the kill on the Grave after the Sonic Boom comes out, and Aquas is going to run away. No, Harbor's going to get the credit with the Spears onto that one. 
as Zekker is trying to make his way into the back line as well as Risky Ace. The Gold Fury is still being done here as Zedru is going to get taunted, take a little bit of damage, and now there are three people uh, waiting here ready to fight as we see Harper has made his way into the lane as four people on the side of Meatball Windows were trying to see if they could get that pick and possibly go for the Gold Fury after that. But yet again, the Gold Fury dance has been stopped. It has all been uh, cut short with a few picks, and nobody's been able to secure this Gold Fury uh, fairly easily. As Sir Bomberman is still lagging, the dash has been taunted out, and Elbow Dog has taken a lot of damage. Mojo Cap is going to be the one to secure that kill. Meanwhile, Sir Bomberman is like, hey guys, I'm here. Yeah, no, he's not here, he's there now. I mean, Sir Bomberman, Sir Bomberman is the map. As he's trying to take these back camps, poor guy, he's just trying to take the back camps, and he's lagging out of the circle for it. Um, but moving on from this one, if we take a look at the graphs, I mean, honestly, there's not a whole lot separating these teams. It's basically an even game. 19 minutes into this game, it's 130 experience and 600, maybe even up towards 800 gold as it bounces back and forth the wave to wave. This game is essentially even. Yeah, honestly, I, uh, I expected nothing less as we are going to see... Uh, <laughs> 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 it out and serve on him and it's going to make his way downtown. Uh, he's walking really fast, actually, and uh, he's just, he's not really able to participate in these fights too much, unfortunately. Our Z killer is going to be able to take advantage of this if they so choose. Is Mojo Cat dashing in yet again? Zekker has also made his way here. So Bomberman is actually in the fight under his heel, but Risky oh. Ace is going to secure the kill from all the way in dual lane with that ultimate. Yeah, great situational awareness there from him. He's able to get up to the big baby. Has been popped and it's going to be pressured onto ZRU. Aqua's made his way to Harbor and the back line. He's just going to dash out and ZDRU was caught between four of them. Even with the lag of Sir Bomberman, he's still able to put out that pressure by just being a fifth body there. The Gold Fury has been started up and all of them are full HP at the moment. The only ultimates, actually almost all the ultimates are left from, uh, from TR. TRU and in fact, Meatball is actually going to be the ones to get the Gold Fury from there. Kind of surprised that... There, I mean, there were still two of them there. The cavalry charge was still up. They still had at least probably two bombs from Elphidog. I'm surprised they didn't try and get that Gold Fury steal. Well, I think it was a smart decision. If they did go in, there was a chance that they could have uh, they could have fallen and lost their lives. With while well, getting the Gold Fury is always nice. It's also nice to make sure that you uh, don't lose your life. So I, I kind of agree with the call right there. As uh, this blue buff is going to be taken away taken away from RZ killers, even. With the lag coming out from Sir Bomberman, Meepo Windows is kind of starting to push themselves in the lead here, having uh, a little over 4,000 uh, in a gold lead. They're uh, they're kind of pushing their way to take this game. Yeah, uh, last time I looked at the grass for the healing, uh, Guan Yu was sitting at uh, just a little over 7.1k there, and that doesn't include you know healing just unto himself. That's team healing in its entirety there. So. He's only gone up about four or five hundred healing in these last, you know, three, four minutes that I've looked at where Sir Bomberman, despite all the lag and all the fun that we have talking about his lag, he has doubled his healing in that time, going from 3,000 to 6,000. That's because he has the Rod of Asclepius there. At the moment, Mercury is charging up the ultimate, looking like he might want to go on to somebody here at the moment, but everybody's a little bit too far spread out. I don't think he wants to make a hard engagement over here in the mid lane just yet. Yeah, meanwhile, the uh, left side tier 1 tower is going to fall as Atmo is engaging 4v1. Grave is going to rotate in, get taunted, and take a lot of damage. Sonic Boom is going to go ahead and go through to pick up Atmo. It is awkward as Sir Bomberman was the one to pick up Grave in that fight. But meanwhile, Meatball Windows is still aggressing. Rumble Ultimate is going to come out. Zekker, uh, Zekker is going to move in with Mochitrix Ultimate on top of him. And Elbert Dog is forced to use that Purification to try and get out. Also a Sanctuary, but he's in a bad spot here. He's just been cursed. He's waiting for that dash. <laughs> it is going to come out Harbor now, in the one in a bad position. Mojo Cat just wanted that reach kill more than anything else. I can see it in his eyes. Like, come on, guys, I just gotta hit him. If I fire off enough ability, ZDR, you gonna fall as well as the tier 2 tower. Phoenix is on uh, the next target. Never mind. Harvest, the next target he's taken out. Phoenix is now what's going to be aggressed on as Elpidog is the only one here to try and fight off five members of Meatball. It's gonna fall, and Sir Bomberman is actually gonna be the next one to go down as he tried to pull the hot 360 ult. But only got halfway there, and Atmo's gonna get the pickup for that kill. Poor little guy, he's he's trying his hardest. He, he's, he's, 
He's, he's trying so hard. He's like, guys, guys, I can help with the fight. <laughs> guys, <laughs> to no avail. He, he's, he's doing, he's doing his share, his fair share for what he has the uh, ability to do here with uh, his connection. So, uh, proud of you, little guy. You're doing all right, Sir Bomberman. Man. But looking at the player damage here, uh, Bamana. Zekker is doing a lot of damage at almost 12,000 player damage just above uh, Agni and just above uh, Mercury too. He, he's kind of leading the charts right here and he they're going to have to shut 80. down. 80 what? damage. 80 yeah. damage is all that separates these top three players right now in the player damage chart. And while well, granted, Zekker's is a lot of solo lane damage. Solo laners typically bring up the numbers a little bit more, except for Sobek, because Sobek doesn't really do damage, honestly, when it comes to being the solo lane tank, as the Fire Giant is being started up here. Ammo is really the only one within the range to try and get this. Grave was too busy taking the speed buff. Fire Giant sitting fairly low here, and Meeple so is going to get it. Bomberman's going to secure it with that one as Aqua's charging up the ultimate. The Athena ult is going to come down onto Zekker. They're trying to pick a target here, but they keep scattering themselves, and they're not able to figure out who they want to take down. Atmo eventually going to fall to the Sir Bomberman shot. Sonic Boom's going to come through, and Eplodon going to be forced to go away. No, a Wrath comes out to actually save his life just a little bit longer, but Zekker is here. As uh, Zedru is going to try to go in and see if he can do anything, but there are five members on that right side, and the middle lane is being defended right now by Harvard. This right side Phoenix cannot last too long, as he's going to be shredded almost instantaneously. Now the team of Meatball Windows is going to rotate over and see if they can take this left side tower and the Phoenix, as it looks like a, a lot of lag is coming up for Sir Bomberman. I think Sir Bomberman wants to take this tower. He's more anxious than anybody else as he's trying to take out the tier one that's already gone. Poor guy. I, we, 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 we keep mentioning it. Poor guy here, but um, two, tier two tower is going to fall. It's going to be a full retreat from Meatball Window as they head towards the Gold Fury, which has just respawned. They're going to be able to get that. Pick up another 1,500 gold for their team to add to their pockets. Again, let's see if I can find where that gold in hand is is at the moment 14 8 make that 1800 gold for the slowest person right now for gold in hand sir bomberman himself is sitting at 2300 gold in hand 2600 for the vamana oh he he just backed and bought and then he just bought a whole mantle of discord that is when you know you are in a good spot mantle of discord being an expensive item but a very very good one picked up on a lot of gods mages will pick this up guardians pick this up warriors pick this up even some assassins will pick this up it's a very it's a very diverse item because almost any god can build it and it makes you so safe having that little uh, mini geb ultimate and the cc immunity uh makes you a fairly harder target to kill as you would without it going another item like the uh, mid guardian mail or another defensive item doesn't give you the same benefits as it looks like uh, Meepaw Windows is going to back yet again, head back to base, finish up their whatever items that they want, and see if they can uh, make their way over to this left side to finish it off. Yeah. Looking at the experience at the moment, Harver is the only one who's hit level 20 on his team, whereas there are three level 20s on the side of Meatball Windows. Vamana, Mercury, and Rom have all gotten it. The mid lane Phoenix has respawned, and surely this is going to be Meatball's next target as there is a three, four, five man grouping as the remaining two players make their way down the lane. Or Sir Bomberman's making his way down somewhere. I don't know if it's downtown. He's moving very fast wherever he's going. Faster. Listen, man, I already made that joke. Look, he's going faster than the fastest man alive. Zebru is going to take so much damage. He's already lost half of his HP, and Atmo is in the back line just trying to do what he can. The big baby, only ultimate that has been expended at the moment on the side of Meatball Window that Phoenix is going to fall very quick. And Atmo, looking like he may be the next one to fall very quick, sitting at half HP. Harvard's going to get taunted immediate purification as the Phoenix is going to be turned on to here. Grave is going to get no. killed on a Sir Bomberman. What a shame. How dare you do that? Just kidding. Atmo is going to fall here to Risky Ace, who's just putting out so much pressure with these auto attacks. Got to get the crit onto ZDRU there. And oh, goodbye, Harvard. 
Of course, just ulting in with that sonic boom and getting two auto attacks to finish off the surrender vote has been started as this titan is going to take a lot of damage. A four man's done. His risk case is going to be executed. Mojo Cat taking this titan, taking a lot of damage. I'm expecting Grave to land on him as we do see Aquas really low, forced to use that sanctuary, still taking a little bit of damage. But Fire Creeps are pouring in, getting this titan to half health. Meepo Windows looking like they're in a really good spot right now. RZ Killer is going to have to defend so hard and defend from a back door from mercury with sonic boom this might be tough yeah they're doing everything that they can but these wa these waves are already so far pushed up as you can see fire minions were already about to hit that right side phoenix and they're gonna need to keep grave here just to make sure that this phoenix doesn't die immediately they want to try and bring up that titan's hp just a little bit if they can because as you know the more structures and more towers and phoenix is down the more health that the Titan naturally loses. And when all of them are down, that's when the Titan's at its weakest point. So they need to make sure they keep somebody here to try and get that Phoenix back up. Yeah, uh, but with the Fire Creeps being uh, pushing down that left lane and the mid lane, so much pressure is going to be put onto RZ Killers that they're not going to be able to... Uh, defend this fire giant which it looks like meatball windows is getting ready to do but there are uh you know there are four people here waiting to de defend this fire giant but if they keep doing this the creeps are going to push into those uh into that titan room and finish it off for meatball windows but the fire giant is uh, looking ready sir uh, sir bomberman is kind of waiting there if there's one thing you can hit it's a still target maybe but the engagement is going to go ahead and start. Sonic Boom being charged. Aquas is going to get knocked up as we do see the heal coming out. I told you, with this lag, that is the one thing the Sir Bomberman can still do fairly easily is just hit three and throw it out. Now, uh, that left lane has not been pushed out. Two Fire Creek waves are coming as the sprint has been started up because Fire Giant is really low at mo going into Risk Ace in the bat li back lines. However, using that ultimate, RZ Killers is going to secure that Fire Giant with the Wrath. From Sobek, Aquas though is getting the kill on the Harbors as Elpidog has been forced to back to defend Atmo really low. Oh, Aquas getting the kill on the Grave! God. Grave has been absolutely annihilated. The crit coming out with that Deathbringer passive is going to make sure that he just dies immediately. Atmo is just trying to hold him off as long as he can, but it doesn't matter. The third lane of Fire Creeps is coming through. There's still no, there's no more left over in the right lane actually, but it doesn't matter. The left side has been pushed up so far. Five people still healthy on the side of Meatball, and they're just going to go ahead and push up into this Titan. There's there's no reason not to. There's only three of them alive there, and they're not going to be able to stop against this. Mojo Cat, the first one in, is going to get flung back. Looks like he actually got thrown into the fountain there, but the Titan is going to fall here. 1,000 HP doesn't matter. Aqua's going to get the last kill on the ZDRU, but Meatball Window going to get 20-7 to 7 victory at 30 and a half minutes. Yeah, that was a uh, that was an interesting game. We kept making mention of Sir Bomberman, rightfully so though, because he was having uh, a bit of struggles throughout that game, uh, you know, lagging constantly. And while we did see a DC coming out from Patmo as well, the same internet connection problems weren't really that big of problems. Meatball Windows is going to be able to secure that game, even with some of those problems. A, a great game coming out, and Aquas actually going 9 1 and 9 on Mercury, putting out 22,000 player damage. I mean, look at his build Four, uh, three crit items, movement speed increase with the Moss Moon, which Wind Demon is going to give him increased movement speed. I mean, he built, he, he, this is almost the essential build for Mercury at this point because he's getting a little bit of movement speed from the boots and the Moss Moon. The crit. Triple crit is going to guarantee that basically one ever one at least one of two auto attacks is going to get a crit. It's going to give him twenty percent more movement speed, thus for giving him more natural power. The Titan's Bane being the main form of penetration that he needs. I mean, Aquas has built a very strong and a, a fairly cost efficient build. Aside from the Deathbringer, that's the one thing that's very costly in this build. But Aquas did a very very good job for himself in this game. Yeah, the only thing I could really disagree with to a certain point is the rage. And while it does guarantee, guarantee a crit every uh, every couple auto attacks, I, I still think Malice might be another way to go. Or, you know, if you're really feeling it, you could always hit up that Poison Star. But, uh, you know, this build worked for him. It worked in this situation. And unfortunately, there just wasn't enough tankiness and enough peel to stop Aquas from going in. You know, the build on Guan Yu was a little bit tanky, but... Uh, he didn't really have enough to help his team out there. Along with Zedru, who wasn't able to really peel 
Alquonk, you know, we expected him to kind of like outclass Mercury, but it didn't really happen. Great games coming out right there. We're going to go ahead and cut it to a short break, but before that, make sure you check out our sponsors. Check out Discord, uh, the voice server application. We have a partnered server with them. Make sure you check us out at uh, discord.gg slash smite central. Make sure you check out Loot Tracker for all kinds of giveaways, smite giveaways, PC parts, uh, you know, other games that aren't smite. Just make sure you check them out, and make sure you check out Gamer Subs supplying you with energy supplements for whenever you're not really feeling like you can win your ranked game. So with that, we're going to go ahead and cut to a short break, and we will check in with you guys in just a bit.
very much and good night. I fell to the ocean floor, feeding light through an open door. I saw myself rise with the water. And they thought they could keep me down, hold their breath and watch me drown. But all they did is push me higher. We don't care what they say. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have the finals here in uh, November's Battle for Valhalla 5v5 here. I am Ajoel, and by my side, I have... How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good. Name's Jim Hack Tucker. In case you may have forgotten, I was here <laughs> last set with Bryce LP's Meatball yeah. Windows is back, taking on Commitment Committee. Was that the name of this team? This is Commitment Committee indeed. They actually took a win versus Team Way in a very, very even semifinals, where actually Team Way misclicked and picked Suze and when they already had a Scylla, and they had to play with a Scylla ADC. They didn't quite cut it, but they came pretty far. So thanks, Team Way, for participating. We already have the first Pix and Bazaar underway. And uh, Thoth is actually banned by Kamehameha Committee, even though he's auto-banned. 
Um, I think that just kind of shows for a commitment committee that they really have no fear of what Meatball has to come, especially since a name that I recognize so highly, Why Try, is on this team. My good man who <laughs> won the ABGL finals alongside the remainder of the Pistol Pete's. This man can play whatever he wants mid. I don't care. He can play Raijin Raw, whatever. So long as he gets his team what they want, and that's what they did. They gave up the Athena for Mojo Cat and said, okay, we'll just take the next best two gods, Al Kuang and Erlong Shen, locked in. And not only that, they're also giving up the Mercury, who Aquas have been performing very well with lately, uh, currently being hovered over, even though you guys cannot see it just yet. Also, the Raw is being ho hovered over here from me by the winners. And this is actually a pick I've seen a Bomberman run in a sustained comp, and it's been very, very hard to counter for the enemy teams. Yeah, I mean, we saw a lot of lag coming out from him last time. Hopefully that will kind of be toned down and fixed up this coming game so we might see a little bit better success on it this time. Not that he wasn't successful, it's just he was he was kind of there. A wheelish locked in immediately by Mondo mm -hmm. Warrior over here on Kavuma Committee. And that tells me that they might be looking for a couple of gods coming into the next one. You mentioned sustain for Sir Bomberman, I think they might be looking into a Sylvanas pickup here with this next one. One of the best gods to apply that knockup with the giant AoE knockup from the Wrath of Terra there. Yeah, when having Terra banned out, Sylvanas is definitely one of the go to sustain gods just behind Raw there. Also, they have a dual jungle setup here. This is a little bit interesting because Glacy B actually made a name of himself in September and October by playing that Avil in the jungle. But he's also been playing Al Kwong tonight and performing really well on it versus Team Wei. So I'm really curious into who's going to play this Al Kwong Dragon and who's going to play the Avil. Yep. Odin has been banned away here, very smart ban by the meat by meatball windows here. I mean, Odin is the probably one of the hardest counters to any healer in the game ever. And taking him away is definitely a smart pick. The op wash that was banned earlier might seem pretty trolly, but at the same time, it's a sustain comp that's coming out from possibly both these teams. So taking away the op wash might be, you know. Not the dumbest thing that we've seen, and it might actually be a fairly smart pickup here. Solo lane kind of being hovered across here, and if this is going to be the solo lane pickup that they go with here, that really throws into the ambiguity of where's Al Qua mm. Okay, never mind. Ebo. Ebo. Yeah, they're, they're looking for one of those knockups oh, to serve the Avilish and feed her a little bit nom nom. And there's a lot of squishies here on commitment committee and i'm wondering if their reply to this uh, raw sustain comp isn't just to try to burst because that's what they did last game when actually yumta the support of team way went sylvanas and he didn't get very far with those heals because he was pretty well targeted yeah raijin and vamana being hovered in here raijin uh, does have that temporary immunity but with raw already locked in i don't know why they were even bothering on the hover there instead jing wei the hunter basically the hunter and the solo lane are kind of being locked in here at the time being ramana still hasn't been adjusted we saw a lot of success from zekker in it last game no reason not to go back to it and this is basically the exact same team minus ROM. Meatball Windows have basically done what we call the salty run back, except, you know, they won last time. So if it ain't, <laughs> if it ain't broke, you don't need to fix it. Yeah, I've been actually watching some of their scrims lately, and they've been running this this uh, comp a lot. So it's definitely something Vulcan. that they've been uh, very successful and comfortable with as well as Vulcan. And another <laughs> another knockup is locked in, and another squishy is locked in on the set of commitment committee who bans all of these gods that no one would pick anyway and keeps just training off. And I don't know if they're just trollers here, but I'm really ex excited to see what happens in this game. Surely Y Try will get a mage, or as I say that, he's currently... <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm, I'm done with Y Try. You know what? You, you can win the MGL, then you can just do whatever you want. I don't care at this point. But yeah. three, uh, three opposing knockups as opposed uh, as compared to a wheelish having her own stationary one. She has now three people on her team to be able to help that. I don't think that you can pull anybody from the out. Kwong ultimate? I've never actually checked to see if that was a thing. If I don't know about that. I've actually never checked that to see if you could pull somebody from the Al Kwong ultimate if it's not an execute. So I'm pretty this... sure you're all his inside of the ultimate. Kind of like a Nest Shower or a Kumba epic uppercut. I don't think you yeah. can get anywhere. Yeah, I, I think it does count more of a banish than it does anything else. That would mm. make that would make the most sense. 
considering you're taking them out of combat for that very long amount of time. So I imagine it probably is a banish, but if it's not, that's a crazy, that's, that's another crazy thing to bring into this. But the lack of tankiness from this team is the big thing mm. that we're going, coming from here. Erlong Shen, the only one with any inherent taking as being a warrior. Everybody else is very, very squishy. And when it comes into the late game, they're just going to be bursted down very quickly. So Meatball's going to have to find some way to kind of sustain out this early game as they have the raw to help in some of the fights. But when it comes to late game, if they don't get a kill onto somebody very quickly, it's going to turn out bad for them. Yeah, having this Hebo and this uh, Kwong late game, dude, I'm scared and I'm just casting it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, if you can get Hop on to the late game, Lord have mercy on your soul. If this god comes <laughs> yeah. anywhere within a mile of you, you just better pray you have all of your relics online because this god is going to just murder you. And we're going to see how well Glazy B does with it. You mentioned that he was... Kind of made a name for himself in the jungle, mm -hmm. so we might be seeing a jungle habwa here, which kind of makes me wonder where the rest of this cast is going. Well, Nikar is a, is a support. I think he plays for most wanted esports. Glaze is definitely a jungle. Mando is a solo lane, and White Thrive means mid nowadays. And Commit is actually subbing as ADC for this fine evening here, but uh, I think all bets are off this game. <laughs> Well, uh, I believe that we were told it is a best of three. So, you know what? They want to have a little bit of fun game one. If it shows that they need to, you know, step it up, they have that option for it. Game two, one thing that's fun, I keep bringing up the AVGL, but it's because two of the players on these teams were part of the AVGL finals. Why try and Mojo actually went against each other. Why try's team ended up coming out on top and Mojo's team was on the bottom. But that was when Mojo was a jungler, which Mojo is not a jungler. He plays nah, Thor. No, 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 no. He plays Thor. He plays a little Hoon Bots and a little Al Kwong, but outside of that, Mojo is a tried and true support. So it's great seeing how well he can perform inside of his own element this time. Yeah, having that Athena should definitely make him very comfortable. Well, guys, we're very excited to bring you this game. We're going to take a little bit of a short break and set it up for you, but we'll be back soon. And, guys, this is one match you don't want to miss. And we're back here with the finals, guys, in this super exciting, exciting troll game here between Meepa and the Windows and Commitment Committee. On the side of Meepa and the Windows, we have uh, Aquas playing Mercury in the jungle, 
Risk Ace playing the Apollo ADC, Mordred Cat on Athena support, Sir Bombman playing that sustained raw in mid lane, and Sekiri playing Vamana in the solo lane. And over on the side of Kavim and Committee, uh, we're going to take our best shot at what we think is <laughs> going here. Mondo Warrior in the solo lane as the Ao Kuang. That's going to be the Jungle Hub Wa, played by Glazy B. Why try, we believe, taking the mid lane, or Long Shen. And Nikara and Commit teaming up for the Owilish Vulcan duo lane. We hope, we think we got this right. We think we got this right. Nikar is a support, he's not building tanky, but it would make the most sense to having that ideal is to actually pair him up with something that has a knockoff and having that synergy going and try to get an early maybe first blood here in the duel lane. Yeah, and as we can see, they have made their way into the lane here. Y-Try is in fact on the mid lane, Erlong Shen, which is a role that we don't see Erlong in, despite all the roles that Erlong Shen can play, mid is something that we've never seen him in, because, you know, that's where you want your burst mages, but instead they put their burst mages in every other lane. New meta, boys and girls. New meta, you saw it here, it's my central first. Yeah, I mean, th this game could honestly go either way. This could be a complete stomp for Commitment Committee, or they could get stomped. It's all going to depend on how they play out this early portion of the game, and how well Meatball in the Windows can do in the late game trying to burst out these targets. Yeah, they're trying to get a first blood here in the solo lane onto Manda Warrior, who's only level 2. He's giving a lot of return to on Sekui. However, almost reaching his tower, getting slowed by Aquas, and he is going down, and that is the first kill of the game, going to a second week with a nice gank in the solo lane. Yeah, unfortunately, that's kind of the uh, downside of Al Kwong in the early game, is he doesn't really have a way to get away until likely level 3 or 4 when he picks up that Water Illusion. Knowing that he only had the Dragon Call and the Wildstorm at the time, it was a very easy kill, considering... Vamana has some of the best chase of any warrior in the game with that slow on the Umbrella Ring and the ability to dash forward at them. Yeah, Invade come going on here in the uh, left, the back camps. Meepo and the windows losing that to Blaze B and White Tire Commitment Committee. Takes a little bit of a nice uh, return farm here. Yeah, making their way back up into mid, coming the safe route there. They're going to lose a couple of minions in gold to the tower, but are going to be able to get all the experience for that one. And they've both hit level 5 here, very crucial at the 2 minute mark. The next rotation here of these fire imps is probably going to be where the fight happens, but the invasion on the top side is going to force the dash out from Mercury. He's going to be okay, no problem. No, not fully okay though. He got away, but at what cost? Look at that active, look at that relic. Yeah, forced to burn that purification very early on. It's going to make him a very susceptible target, especially for a Habwa Erlung. That is, those are two guys you don't want to have your relic burned. Yeah, I, I, I think above on the list of gods, I don't want to meet in a dark jungle. I think Habwa is pretty far top. As two I say that, the uh, T5 goes on here, knock up and Tong going off. In the uh, above the right mid harpy, Sekiri getting low, having to use the big babe and get out of that fight. Aquas gets getting picked up, no, no longer having those beats show to uh, punish him. Yeah, I mean, that's just what happens when you don't have the purification, the taunt comes through, and pretty much everything else is not able to get away from the damage there. When you couple Erlong and Hopwat together, no matter where on the map they are, it's just spelling disaster here. Another two, another uh, rotation here is Tier 1 Teleport Tower actually coming out from Sekiro there. Uh, opted to go towards the speed buff. I actually, I actually really appreciate that one. Not too many solo laners do this. They normally go straight over to their Tier 2 as we have the Sonic Boom coming out onto Wide Try. Nick Haro is just going to be out of range from that ultimate there, but Aquas is going to pick up the kill. Unfortunately, a little bit too aggressive there by Nick Haro. He is a very squishy assassin early on. Yeah, having opted to go aggressive Avils with the blues and with that warrior tower, but he has no defense at all. And when Aquas comes with that revenge ultimate setup, there is no uh, hesitation from the rest of his team. And down, down the car goes in the mid lane, and it's not 2 1 on the kill board for me by Windows. Yeah. Going back on what I was saying earlier about the teleport, almost all solo laners nowadays in these first few levels always teleport over to that tier 2 tower, but instead he liked to go to the tier 1 tower this time. Why try getting the two-man taunt onto Aquas over at the red buff? Habwa's ultimate coming through, one of those many that he possesses, and it's a fight over here for this red buff. Still hasn't been dropped, and wow, Sir Potter <laughs> getting away with 
I think like 2 HP, Vulcan Ultimate not going to do anything there. The car are going to jump right back off of Sufu, but the Blink is going to force the Purification onto Risky. Going to get knocked up. Nikaro himself might fall here to Zekker, who is still over here fighting. Meanwhile, Bondo Warrior is nowhere to be seen, taking his blue buff. Not really uh, contributing anything to this fight. Red buff still being fought over. Yeah, I think that Mander here was singing out so early, recognized he need to catch up with Farm, and he can't actually rotate. Also, he did off for the uh, Wrath, so he doesn't have the teleport available uh, for mobility just yet as Sekui has for his team. Vaithrae being caught here in the mid lane, he's out of mana, but it looks like Meepa would have worked. Let, get, let him get away, but then he goes right back into those four members of Meepa in the windows, not sure what he was hoping for that he gets taken out indeed by these four members and now Nikar is left alone to defend this mid lane tower. Yeah, and as we mentioned, he's a very squishy assassin at this time. Awilish really not contributing too much except for damage in the early game. A minor bit of CC has the root with that feather step and then has the knock up with the uh with the astral I believe it's the astral tiger or astral jaguar or something like that. He's trying to box against Aquas here, but unfortunately has been taunted in. Sir Bomberman putting up on that lag switch yet again, keeping him alive in these fights. <laughs> oh my time. god. He's staring at them all. Yeah, I spoke to him a little bit before this game and it's actually super frustrating. He said he was sitting out underneath the Phoenix last game as well, so it's not easy to be a raw right now. You are risky ace is a little bit out of position here, even though the wards are down from Ipa and the so he still gets picked off close to this gold tier that's now being started by Commitment Committee, but multi cat is there and Sir, so is Sir Bomber without the ult, however, he gets the healing out, he still gets taken down. The Vulcan will secure the first gold tier of the game to Commitment Committee. Yeah, Mono Worm has made his rotation over here finally at the same time. That's just because the teleport was expended from Zekker there again. It's now on its three minute cooldown that everybody loves about the teleport uh, after it got adjusted there. Speed buff being contested here is not going to be secured by Aquas. Athena comes through. The Sonic Boom is the only going to land on the Clay's B who is out of mana. Going to get taunted and thrown against the wall. Aquas going to get the credit for the kill on that one. Mojo Cat is still charging forward. Risky Ace is going to come crashing down, but a little bit far away for that one. Four players are pushing up to this tier one tower to try and chase out Y Try and Mondo. But yeah, and I don't know if Equipment Committee has enough CC and PL to, to save this tower. They are split for the meanwhile in the dual lane with that Commit Vulcan, not having the same tower damage output, of course, as four or five members of Meepa and the windows who are now ke keeping the pressure on in the jungle here and uh, looking maybe to get more pickoffs. Yeah, but at the same time, while they don't have the same push over there, they're allowing Commit to free farm. He's now gained a level advantage over Risky Ace at the time, and Vulcan with a level advantage oh is great, but Aqua's gonna get the credit. Kwong. Yeah, a lot of, lot of squishy target. I see it now, Kwong. Oh my god, yeah. Bomberman is the first one to fall. Um, members of Meepa and the Windows are trying to run, Wythra is finishing off that Sekiri, and the members of Meepa and the Windows were actually set up to be pretty low by Nikara on that Avilish. Even though he did go down, he made him low enough for his team to be able to secure two kills. Meanwhile though, in the duel lane, there's a little bit of fighting going on from Risk Ace and Commit, who was able to take down the tier tower, but then had to back off. Yep, was able to get the tower sexually, so it was a one-for-one -one trade tower-wise, and Mondo would end up did getting a kill to kind of bring it back into this game. He was about 400 gold down earlier, mostly from the first blood, but has now drawn it even with Zekker. In fact, leading the top of the net worth charts at the moment is going to be Mercury and Habwa, both the junglers. Aquas and Glazy keeping up basically dead even with each other, just a couple of gold here and there from the wave to wave. Forming group up from Meatball in the windows here where there's only two. Why try gonna get taunted? He's gonna take quite a bit from the celestial being, but is going to use that turtle form, get that little bit of a health shield there. Yeah, able to stay stay in himself. Meanwhile, in the soul lane, Sekiri here were aggressing on to Mana War. He was just able to secure his but Why there is a rotation, but the female comes in as well, trying to get him pick up here. Why are getting taunted, has no tower to stay, but 
does get the pin down, trying to escape from the big baby right now. Meanwhile, Sir Bobberman has rotated to the fight, but he's not close to Motorcat. He's alone versus Nikara. Motorcat being able to group out with Aqua. Sir Bobberman able to reach them, and they're grouping up pretty nicely, able to be secure. Mano is juking them, going in, Vistal getting away from that time. Motorcat being real low, pin coming up from White there. Man, don't worry, guys, a Glazy B takes out Sekui. Um, Vulcan ult coming down, Heartshaker takes out your bomber. Aquas is still there on retreat as three of its teammates has gone down and is now 10-7 on the kill board for Quick Committee. Yep, and they're gonna go ahead and take the speed buff here, no problem. Nobody's there to be able to stop them, and they're gonna give that over to Committee instead of the jungler Glazy B there. He's a little too low to make his way over. Three man back over in the solo lane as they're gonna Leave commit to try with why try here to push down this solo lane tower and try and get another 500 gold on top of like that. Okay, never mind. They're just gonna go ahead and walk <laughs> away as the teleport was uh, forced out here through Zekker to try and save this tower. Yeah, the power of the teleport. He doesn't have the big bay ultimate just yet, but still he's able to square off those squishies and says, "Get out of my lane, boys!" And <laughs> out they go. And now they're coming to the mid lane. There's the three members of Miba in the windows, but Aquas gets really poked out, and we might see the only two members left here. Yeah, with that knockup forced onto Mojo Cat there, he's gonna have to walk away. Now it wasn't quite sure if the Nikaro if Nikaro's ultimate was up there at the time, but to be safe, he's gonna go ahead and walk away. Red Ruff gonna be dropped here. Likely gonna be given over to Y Try, actually, who's gonna pick that up. I thought he might leave that for commit, <laughs> but you know, whatever Y Try does, Y Try is. So I mean he, he he's the mid lane he's the AVGL mid lane champion for a reason. So, you know, if he wants the if he wants red buff on her long, he can have red buff on her long. <laughs> he is actually ahead here with the most kills and sharing the most assists for his team. So it is with a pretty good reason that he is taking that buff. And we're going to see how much poke he can get up and potentially set up Mando Warrior here for our new uh, Ao Kuang uh, ultimate. Yeah, going to try for it here. Mojo Cat forced to dash away under the tower. Bomberman also here as well. Mondo actually going to get taunted out of the stealth there. I'm not sure if Mojo Cat could see him or not, but a great pull nonetheless. Gold Fury has been started up by three members, sitting up at half HP. Now make that all five members of Commitment Committee. Paul is going to go into the sky. He's going to come crashing down, but Commitment is still going to get the Gold Fury here. Sonic Boom into the back line. Going to do so much damage. Blazy B going to take out Sora Barman as the other members are going to be able to walk away from this. Three members sitting at ha under half HP, but none of them have died yet. Oh my god, Aqua, that was hot. He gets taken out eventually, trying to be greedy and chase on Glaze to be and commit, who are both very low, but they do have that CC and they do have that burst, and he gets taken down. So does Mojo Cat of Nikar, and Osekui is the only remember remaining here. It was actually D side for just a second there, as all members of Meepo and the Windows went down to this burst cap here coming up from the community, who seems to be pretty successful. Yeah, them trying to take out, them trying to stop the Gold Fury there ended up wipe, kept causing a full team wipe that the SI came through. And two of the members who were sitting under half HP are still here. Why try trying to push up this tower, but mm. is going to use the Turtle Form as well as the Suku from Nikara to get away from this one. I'm surprised at how poorly that fight went for Meatball. They got three members under half HP, but they weren't able to get any secures onto them. Mm. Because of that, it was a full team deicide as well as the Gold Fury. Yeah, it looked really, really good there for a while for Commitment Committee. Also without any, uh, for me behind the windows, I mean, after that Aqua's uh, Mercury set up, but they were not able to capitalize. And again, the Nikara Avilish Fetter step is a lot of damage as now the teams are starting to fight a little bit more here around these right side mid counts. But I do believe that Meepo and the Winners wants to just chill out and maybe take it easy after being perhaps uh, decided. Oh, blink from Glazy B and the knockup just a little off the mark there as Aquas was able to dash away. Hasn't hit level 12 yet. In fact, Apollo and Vamana are the only ones on the side of the order team who have picked up their second rel. Well, Vamana hasn't quite picked up picked it up yet, but is available to pick up that second relic at the time where everybody on commitment committee has been able to pick up their second relic. We see two blinks here, one on a wheelish and one on Glazy Beast Hubwa, which we saw a little display there. The Sonic boom over into the dual lane. Commitment's gonna be able, commitment's gonna be able to get away from this just at the time being. Gonna drop down the turret. Force Aquas to focus down on it instead. 
Nick Harlow's gonna get a kill on a Mojo Cat in the mid lane, and Apollo's into the sky, gonna try and find Commit, is going to get onto that one. Nick Harlow, however, getting a double kill onto Sir Bomberman. Yeah, I think that for the longest time, even under Windows, they didn't want to have to waste that Apollo ultimate to uh, lock down Commit, but he was able to zone so well, having his Magma Boss and his Cannon, that they eventually saw that they could not get him in any, any other way. However, Meepa and the Windows did back off after that kill and open up for Commitment Committee to do a lot of damage here on this tier 2 tower in Doom. So Mana and Athena are here along with Aquas. Aquas gonna get the credit for the kill onto Nick Haro as they stayed a little bit too long over in that duo lane. And Nick didn't quite take the best path and Y try is gonna get away, but it's a four man grouping here. Gonna look to probably push out this tier 1 tower in response to the tier 1 they lost earlier and half the tier 2. Yeah, why try? You know, he's brave, but he recognized that 4v2 with half HP is not a fight he should be taking. And he does let them have that tower for free. Glacy B is there now, however, so it might be a different game here in the upper jungle. And Meepa and Windows giving a lot of respect to this 4 and 2 Hebwa and actually chooses to back off to uh, secure some XP in their own jungle. I mean, with the build that that Hobwa has, I'd be giving more than just a lot of respect. I'd be saying, <laughs> Hobwa, you know what? If you want this speed buff, you can have it. Aqua's charging the ultimate at the time, but I don't think he's going to want to go into that. That is an that is an Alquong and a Hobwa, both significantly higher than him at the moment. And with a, a little bit more damage, Glazy B. Glazy, Glazy uses that uh, ultimate from the Hebo, just shredding damage onto Mordekat at the guess taking out. Aqua's out of position in the mid lane, getting taken out by Glaze, using the ultimate as soon as those that duplication had run out. Rich Gaze is underneath the tower, but is getting poked more and more poked out by the members of the commitment committee. And he is going to have to back and give this one up, or he's gonna pay with his life as the Earthshaker goes down. Sekiri is still alive here as Bomberman also disconnected due to his lag issues. And Commitment Committee, they're not, you know, they're not wasting any time and they're taking down the first tier two of the game in the mid lane. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go ahead and split up, try and take out what is in the jungle. Speed buff going to go the way to Glazy B. Commit likely to pick up this, nope, Commit not going to pick up the red buff. Nikaro instead has decided supports need red buffs. Has found <laughs> Mojo Cat kind of just lazily oh, sitting no. at the tower. Is going to get the gravity surge onto him. Purification popped early in response, but Nikaro... You you may have overstayed your welcome, Aquas and Zekker gonna be able to finish up that kill over there. Yeah, we've seen actually Nikar overextending all game and sometimes being punished for it and sometimes not. He was six kills. Uh, he had six kills and had the most kills in the game and got a little bit too brave there. He almost got the kill onto Mojo Cat, but being that tanky Athena with those protections, Mojo Cat was able to sustain long enough for his teammate to come and back him up and punish Nikara for all his aggression. Yeah, and despite the nerf that reinforced Greens received a long time ago, hold that. Mojo Cat's gonna ult over into the solo lane on top of Risky. Mondo's gonna be able to get away for now, but I don't think the same is gonna be for Glazy B as Risky Ace is gonna be able to get the kill onto him. Mondo is gonna be able to safely make his way over to the tier 2 tower. Just I mean, this is just the pressure that Meatball Windows has is they're able to use Mojo Cat's ultimate to force their way wherever they want to. That's kind of the power of Athena is the ability to get anywhere you want at any time. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about these taunts that have been coming out from Mojo Cat this game. They've been actually very, very detrimental for just keeping Meepa and the Windows in the game and getting a few nice return kills as they do run away now, respecting the higher levels and the better items from the Static Event Committee. And this retreat is a little bit of chaos as Mojo Cat is getting low and guessing it as well. Sekiri is using that ultimate, but no one cares about it. Ramana, big baby, no one wants to touch that. Risque is going down as well as Aqua is charging his ultimate, but he is for sure not going to go into that mid lane anytime soon because he has no one to capitalize on any of that stun setup. Now, four-man push into the Phoenix here would have been five-man, but Glazy's just now getting back out of base. Nikara takes a little bit more poke than he could deal out onto Zekker, who takes a significant amount himself. Mid-Phoenix is going to fall. Glazy B just going to go ahead and take down that red buff, you know. Slowly but surely, the top one does. And he's going to pick it up himself, and with the damage that he has online for him at the moment, 426 magic power. That, that's a very scary hop 
so very scary. I have YMD. It is also level 18, which is highest in the game for now by about a level and a half. So that should really start showing here in these team fights that we're going to see. And I'm wondering if Commitment Committee is not going to look at that Fire Giant soon. Um, honestly, at this time, they really don't need it. They've shown that they can fight with or without, especially with a 5v4 at the moment, since Sir Bomberman has still not reconnected. I believe they're out of pauses at the time, so that's why they really haven't been able to stop for him. It's a little bit unfortunate for him, but sometimes it's just how the cookie crumbles. Mondo and Glazy going to take this speed buff. The Sonic Boom's going to come through, and Mondo's going to be able to pick it up while being <laughs> spun around in circles. Now, unfortunately, Vamana is being bursted down very heavily. The ultimate's not going to be able to do anything. A missed taunted ultimate there. And Glazy B, another missed ultimate. It's just, Zekker um, has gotten alive just for the sheer amount of misses that this team has put out there. They want to kill this Vamana, and they want to kill this baby. <laughs> They're having a hard trouble to do so. He's almost making it to the fountain, but White Eye with the pin gets him down. Meanwhile, he's charging out. Ace in the left side jungle here as the Cat is running for his life, trying not to die, gets knocked up, however, and taken out by Nicaro. And now Aqua is the only remaining member here, Meatball in the window, to try to find his Titan. Yeah, with the mid Phoenix down and only one man truly standing in the way here, the Titan is going to be the next thing looked at. Aqua's gonna get blinked onto by Nick and evaporated from the damage of the Awilish Hobwalk combo, and they're gonna go ahead and push onto here. Commit with a little bit of BM there. They're gonna turn their eyes towards the Phoenix's mojo and Zekker, the only one's gonna be coming up shortly, but it doesn't matter. Titan's gonna fall 27 to 11. Commitment committee win at the 21 minute mark. Yeah, and they showed zero respect for me, but and the windows having those uh, ADC and thought bands early going all squishy, going blinks, going aggressive bills, but being able to re really um, outplay the sustain comp on the side of uh, me when the winners. Also, me when the winners, they did have that disconnect from the raw. So it was really hard for them to sustain themselves, which was what the whole lineup was built against. So yeah, that was a very hard game here for me when the winners. Hopefully, Sir Bomberman can come back to game two here, because guys, this is the best of three after all. Yeah, hopefully Sir Bomberman, as you said, can reconnect in here. Kind of kind of got pressured out very early, fell at a very early 0-6-3, zero and, zero and three, wasn't able to get any kills up there, wasn't able to put out the sustain that this team was depending on. They were really hoping that this Raw could keep them going into these team fights. It's, with all the burst damage that comes out from Commitment, they needed that Raw sustain to keep them alive. So once the rotation of kits was down, once the ultimates had been expended, they could just kind of sit back, heal, and then re-engage. Yeah, definitely a very, very conscious tactic here by uh, Commitment Committee. And it's it's, it's kind of funny because they, they do have a lot of subs tonight. So it's, uh, yeah, I would have expected them to go maybe with something a little bit more more safe. But they're going, they're going all out here. Yeah, but we are going to go into a brief break as we get set up for game two in this best of three. Will Meatball be able to get their mid laner back in here? to try and take the second game, or is it going to be a 2-0 victory for Commitment Committee? We'll be back to find out shortly.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the Battle for Valhalla November finals, and it is the final final series here of the evening. We've already seen one game where Commitment Committee took a little bit of a troll victory against Meepa and the Windows. And uh, game two here is underway as Commitment Committee locks in that first Susano jungler here. Do you think we're going to see more junglers again here on the Santa Commitment Committee? I don't know what to expect from Susano. Commitment Committee, honestly. You know, after that last game, you never, you, you can't expect anything. Expect the <laughs> unexpected and don't expect the expect uh, the unexpected either. Like, you, you can't expect anything from them. Isis has been locked in a Isis. god which, personally... I don't really see as that strong of a character at this time. I don't, I'm not a big favor of the, especially this so early, bad. early Isis pickup here. There are a lot of other stronger gods in the game. Obviously, Ra that we saw from Survivor Man and Giannis even potentially as well. But said Isis Sobek and Kumba Karna has locked in a little bit more traditional support, but we'll um. see where he goes. We'll see though. Man of Warrior, the soul lane here, Commitment Committee, he can play literally anything. And he locks in honor here. And I'm wondering if this is not going to go to Warthrye, because I've seen him play that before. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, from last game, this could be a traditional team. This could be a whatever team. <laughs> we could see on her jungle. We could see on her ADC. We could we could see yeah. on her and we we can expect any of these gods anywhere at this point. It's just all gonna come down to who holds on to them coming to the end. If we're looking at traditional team here, then it still needs to have a mid laner and a solo laner locked in on the side of commitment going into this next round of bands here. Ma, uh, Rama is being hovered in here at the time for Risky Ace, a god which I think he performed a little bit better on than he did the Apollo. Yeah, it's definitely been Wrong. one of his go-to picks here as well. It goes pretty well with the icy spear balls as well, locking down those targets. I want to talk a little bit about the Isis pick here. Isis is a god that's a little bit out of meta, but if you do go a hyper carry jungle who misses a little bit of CC, uh, for example, Kamasas or Ao Kuang, then suddenly Isis becomes very viable here in the mid lane. Yeah, the problem with, though is that Isis has to use so much for her kit for self peel that she doesn't get to really use it for what it's really strong for. I mean, with the silence, it's a protection shred in which she can only use it on one target who's kind of bursting her or a short range spirit ball. She starts lacking that damage that she could use for a long range spirit ball or a group silence where she gets a lot more protections off of it. Looking at the bands here, Scylla and Ra were banned away, expecting <laughs> the traditional mid lanes to be banned. But Bakasura and Zhang Kui banned away. <laughs> yeah, commitment committee here, they're just trolling. As long as they're not one game down, and as long as they're not about to lose, they have a, they feel like they have enough leeway to kind of do a little bit what they want. And the bands go the same way as they did last game when they banned Ra, Mashibaloki, or Posh, and Thoth. Meanwhile, on me one the windows, Zyatos. they're actually banning out the very composition that they had that have been very successful on lately with the Raw, with the Athena and the Erlang's channel. A little bit uh, interesting by them. They they re obviously realize that these are very strong picks and want to make sure they do not go in the hands of commitment committee as they themselves are switching their uh, composition a bit. Yeah, going for the Thanatos, going for a very early game team as far as the jungle mid combination is as we've seen sobek is more of that mid to late game guardian rom definitely the late game sniper when it comes to it but they're gonna take a page out of meatballs book here mercury. and commitment committee is gonna lock in mercury and possibly <laughs> this nox gonna be locked in for a wide stride in the mid lane very good recognition here from the uh, commitment committee. Wythrai, who is a very experienced mid laner, chooses an actual counter to Isis here. Whenever Isis is trying to lane clear, trying to use her wing gust, it's very easy for Nox to put her siphon darkness uh, underneath it and actually silence Isis out of her lane clear. I was kind of hoping we'd see the Loki there just because if we're going to troll, we might as well go all the way with it. Hovering in the Thoth tier at the moment, I don't believe that they're no. able to actually lock that one in. I was just kind of trolling around here, but <laughs> Bologna, a little bit more standard of a god to be locked in, is going to be likely going over to the solo lane in the hand mm. of Zekker. 
been doing fairly well on that Vimana. Now I'm going to switch to a little, little bit different, a more... Actually, they kind of focus the same way. Vimana is a little bit into auto attacks and a little <laughs> bit into ability. Bologna as well, using her abilities to augment her auto attacks. Yeah, Bellona is actually Sekui's second most played god, and he's his favorite god. So I'm actually really excited to see what he's going to bring out of her here in the solo lane. I think he'll be able to sustain and have a little bit of more CC necessarily than uh, for the team fights that maybe Vamana could provide. Here, meanwhile, Commitment Committee keeps switching up those roles, keep trying. Like, whenever I apply with Commitment Committee, who is usually also known as Chairman, we kind of go a, a comp that looks standard on paper, but then when you get in game, everyone takes very, very different roles, and it's always very, very fun matches. Yeah, uh, I mean, when we looked at it, this could have been considered a traditional draft from Commitment. But Good it's up. commitment. <laughs> and they've decided that Kumba Karna mid is the way, the love, and the life to be. Nick Haro's taking, I believe, a page out of the AVGL's book here. In fact, a page from Nodes Gaming where they're going to run the Nox support. I mean, Nox support's legit, if you ask me. I mean, just talk to <laughs> Killateral. Killateral loves this god, apparently. We'll play him and throw the Odin ADC to the way of his hunter. But Glazy B gonna be running the on her jungle oh, he loves the on her jungle he does it all the time in casual expect very very aggressive play here by glaze who doesn't fear anything when he is on it this lion indeed guys we're gonna want to look at we want to give a little bit of a shout out to our sponsors here tonight we have a partnership with discord for our uh, discord server loot tracker who provides you with all the giveaway infos of course, um, Smite uh, Hires Expo for the Smite World Cup. We have the Smite Central discount code. If any tickets are available, uh, if they do release any new ones, be sure to use that one. And last but not least, of course, it is GamerStuffs.gg providing all those energy powders. Also, guys, if you like what we do here tonight, we do have a donation button underneath the stream where you can give a little bit of a support for us who are running this uh, production this uh, fine evening. With that, guys, we're going to cut to a little bit of a short break. We'll be back soon with Game 2 of the November Battlefield Hala Finals. We're back, guys, with the uh, second game here of the uh, finals between oh. Commitment and the Meatballs and the Windows. We see a little bit of an early invade here going off from Meatball and the Windows as they go deep into the jungle. Commitment committee, but only Commitment and White Thry is there. 
and they're not very interested in, in fighting. Mojo Cat. Mojo. Mojo Cat. Missing the pluck. As yeah. usual, no, I'm not. Aww. I'm giving Mojo a hard. I, lo I love giving Mojo Cat a hard time. He he's a great guy. I got to I got to talk with him and his teammates for a bit. Great, th they're great guys um, from the ABTL. But missing that pluck there is going to basically spell the end of that invade. Was not able to land it. Looked like he was targeting onto Y try there, trying to get a little bit of shutdown onto this early Kumakarna, but unsuccessful. Now it's just going to be a standard start from both teams doing the back camps and the red buff. With the one exception, though, the uh, Soul Bank Mojo Cat actually has a pluck that is not going to be very beneficial to oh. the early and clear. And then the invade goes on here on the uh, right side, uh, even the uh, speed buff for uh, Meepaws and the windows here. And uh, I think they were able to... No, it got stolen yeah. by uh, Commando Committee. Yeah, Glazy B was able to get that. His uh, solo laner, Ma uh, Mando, I believe is how he told us to say it. Mando has the Wrath on that Susano and is able to secure that buff away from them. We said standard starts, but we neglect to talk about the invade, and now the blue buff's going to be started up by them. They both hit level 2. They're going to have a very strong experience gap coming in here as Y-Try is making the rotation to try and take out this blue and speed with them. Yeah, they, they, they were sharing that blue buff XP, but they should still come out ahead and they should hit that level 5, that important level 5, a little bit earlier, can potentially set up for an early gank and maybe get that first blood as well. Yeah, left side mid camp has gone the way of Meatball in the Windows as Isis has hit level 4 beforehand, so even though they were splitting that experience, they're so far a little bit behind just because of that mid-camp that they lost out there, and if they're not quick, they might even lose out on a few of these griefs here. Dual lane aggression onto Mojo Cat's gonna be put down to about half HP at the time being, and honestly, it's just gonna be a little bit of a poke war over the dual lane. Yeah, we saw Nikara there missing his combo, but still getting a root on Mojo Cat, and Commit was able to provide a little bit of Pogan damage as return damage was also given by Riskace. So Commitment Committee members in this duel lane also have to use a little bit of a healing potion. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Wyatra is getting spirit followed and Winga sitting, and he's getting pretty low here versus the uh, two members of Meepos and the Windows with one Isis ultimate. Yeah, I mean, this is the power of a very heavy CC comp coming out from the mid lane and the jungle. They have two forms of silence, the stun from Isis, as well as a very harsh slow from that uh, from the death site. I couldn't think of the name of that for the moment there, but back camps were stolen away by Meatball in the windows. They were able to take those back lefts. Back rights just now going to be dropped by Glacey and Y try as they come back to the mid lane. Spirit Ball not going to connect there, although it was a very cute attempt. Yeah, at that long range, it's pretty easy to uh, juke that spare ball, especially uh, especially at this at this point. We see a little bit of a rotation coming up from Korean Committee into the left side jungle. Mojo Cat having to dash away, being slow by the Glazed B pillar, being impaled, and a lot of nice, a um, lot of nice poke coming out here from Glazed B, who shows him who's the king of the jungle. Yeah, I mean, Glaze B able to get out that nice impale against the wall. Was probably trying to set up for the pillar stun, but, you know, getting any stun is, you know, nice. You're going to be looking at the speed buff, but they don't know the timer on this. They're expecting it to be down, but I think they forgot that they got invaded. It's the same with the blue buff. It's going to be staggered timer, so just getting those off the map at the time, clearing away those icons. Nikaro has made his rotation here into the mid lane. Going to help clear this off, and in fact, it's now a three-man gank here into the mid lane. Aquas is going to come crashing down. The Spear Ball is not going to connect onto anybody as the meditation has been popped from Nikaro, and the fight's going to turn back. Lazy B is going to get the first blood of the game. Isis Ultimate's not going to do anything, and it's going to be a disengage. Why try just barely making it out of that fight? Yeah, we saw the uh, power of the Glaze B er, Ultimate, the early Death Fury here, doing so much damage to the Meepaw and the Windows in this mid lane. But uh, eventually, Wytry got a little bit too low, and his team recognized that it was time to, to back off and take some safe farm in the jungle. Yeah. Mid camp. So over here on the left side, about to respawn. Bomber and Mojo were setting up for that rotation, but instead going to try and get their red buff here, which 
is fine. Nick Carr is the only one here that they really know of of the mid lane. He's not going to be able to secure these left sides on his own. Although if somebody else starts them, he might have a decent time. Gonna drop the silence on top of himself. Gonna get flung into the back. Silenced out in the wind gust, but he's gonna dash into his teammate. Commit made the rotation over here, but it's just gonna be a disengaged left side. Harpy's gonna go the way of Meatball. Yeah, Nikara they got a little bit out of position, also using his silence, which is his peel. One of his best peels actually very early to secure the mid caps, not having it anymore. Meepos in the windows recognizes and try to go on him, but ultimately he got some uh, reinforcement back commit and was able to dash into him and uh, be escorted out of that fight very, very uh, nicely and gently. Yep. At the time, score still sits at 1 0 at 5 minutes. We had the very early aggression over in the mid lane. Right now, Mando getting a little bit of an advantage onto Zekra, which is a little surprising considering Bologna is kind of a little bit of an early game bully with how she how she functions, having that bludgeon to be able to clear the wave, although it has been recently nerfed on its timers and giving her more options, but aside from that, Mojo Cat going to go into lurk in the waters, and as soon as he comes out, Y-Try is going to be there on the landing. Three ultimates expended, and Mojo Cat's still going to get out. Aquas goes into the back line, and Commit's going to pick up Mojo Cat. Yeah, Commit coming from nowhere at the 11th hour with that long way Mercury ultimate being able to secure the kill on Mojo Cat. Now, the ultimate coming out from... Isis, man, the warrior meanwhile falls for a solo kill in that solo lane. Risky phase meanwhile takes down Nick Harrow because the fight does continue on the left lane. Aqua wants to take out that Kuma Karna Waitrai, but he has enough root and peel to fend for himself. Meanwhile, the three members here of Meeples in the Window, they're starting this gold fury. Yep, but with the Isis ultimate down at the moment, it's going to be a little bit tougher to secure. No major ultimates, but nobody from Commitment is making the rotation over here to stop this one. And by the time they're going to get there, it's going to be too late. Commit finds Risky. It's going to have a little bit of a slap box here, but there are a few members who were able to try and help him out. Glazy B just missing out on that impale that would have secured the kill. Yeah, meanwhile, Kometa getting scythed and slowed and is most likely going to fall, getting knocked up by Mojo Cat, trying to run into his own jungle. He gets the dash up and is able to get out as Glaze to be does some imp impaling to scare off the members of Meepa and the winners who are now backing here, even though they're five people versus two right now. <laughs> Nikara needs to be a little careful. He's aggressing into five members at the time. Mando Warrior, because once again he's picked up that wrath and the lack of teleport. Not going to be able to rotate quite as fast as Zekker. Instead, he elects to push that wave, shove it into the tower, and maybe try and get a little poke, but those elementals are down. Not going to be able to get that experience at the moment. Yeah, meanwhile, Glacibe is taking this red buff, and I am probably expecting him to take it himself, being that honor, having that Kill. No, he leaves it for someone else and chooses to go to this fight here in the mid lane as people in the windows are aggressing here onto Nikar and the community committee. Aqua's having to use his ultimate to get away and Nikar goes into uh, the uh, fat man Kumba Karna here but goes out just as quickly as there is no more danger on that battlefield in the mid lane. Yeah, it's just going to be a full disengage from them as buffs are being looked at here. Speed buff has been picked up by Aquas. Not really too much. The Eagles rally has come down, but it's immediately going to be taken away. Glazy B going to get the credit onto Aquas as it looks like Mojo Cat is possibly the next one. Oh no, it's not going to get hit against that pillar. It's instead going to be shoved right next to the tower. Yeah, I think that was a little bit of a misplay here by Glazy B. He was trying to get the, the pillar in Pell, but instead he pillared him away even though he might have gotten that kill if he hadn't. So maybe a little bit of a uh, stylish greed there. As I say, that three members of the committee are aggressing onto ISIS in this uh, mid lane tier one tower. Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of what happens is ISIS needs her abilities to clear the wave, and when there's three people there, it's a little bit harder for her to stop. Midcamp's gonna be going the way of commitment, kid, commitment committee here on the right hand side. Nothing they're really able to do about it. Elementals are available, and Nick Carr looks like he wants to get those for himself. He plays to be a wide try, gonna take down the speed buff. 
Meanwhile, in the solo lane, Man of Warriors is actually getting pretty low here versus Sekiri. Even if Meatballs would be behind, which should not, this game is fairly equal right now. This is one of Sekiri's go-to gods, actually his favorite god, so... Mando is also a very, very experienced soul laner, but having that Susana versus the Bologna, which is like quite cutting it for him right now, when he finds himself very low, having to try to clear stuff underneath his tower as the fight breaks out in the mid lane. Yeah, why try forced into the sleepy passive? So while not getting a kill, that's a very long cooldown before he's able to get that, that passive back up. I believe it's four minutes, and that's a that's a very long time. Nick Carl going to miss the root, which would have gotten the kill there. Glazy B forced to jump away, and I don't think that there's an. I don't think he's low enough. Is gonna juke out Aquas's ultimate there, but Nick Carl is here. Is gonna get stunned out. It looks like he might die himself here. The Typhoon has been charged up as well as the Sonic Boom. Mojo Cat's so low, but nobody's able to get to him. Yeah, beautiful ultimate combo here. Coming up for Clinton Committee. I mean, that's a sound of knockoff into that Mercury ultimate as well. However, the members of Meepo are pretty healthy. They're getting grinded up more and more. It's like we can take now. Mojo Cat as well by the uh, by the Smash here, by Comet. And now Clinton Committee are also trying to take out Risky Ace here being able to knock him up. The Aquas is trying to uh, peel a little bit, able to get the kill on Commit because the members of Commitment Committee are getting pretty low here. And uh, I think Sanatanos is among the people you don't want to meet when you're low. And actually, a lot of return skills coming up by Meepo and the Windows who are punishing a Commitment Committee for this overextension. I think you said it best there of the team you don't want to meet when you're low Thanatos, Isis. Rom, all gods who can excel at killing you very easily when you're low HP. Nick Haro gonna miss the silence root on Aquas, and because his kit's uh -oh. down, but Aquas' uh -oh. ultimate is up. Gonna force him to go onto the Fire Giant, but that's all for <laughs> nothing there. It's just gonna throw the death side that the Fire Giant said to heal back up onto it. Yeah, he almost got himself into trouble there. You don't want to fight it. I think, you know, just above the Thanatos in terms of people you don't want to fight, I think Fire Giant might be just above. Yeah, Red Buff gonna be dropped here and given over to Commit. Pick that one up. I thought Y tried it for a second there, but instead, looking at the graphs here at the moment, experience is 2,900 in favor of Meatball in the windows, as well as a 1,900 gold lead. They've been doing very well in this early game. When it comes into the late game, though, they're really not going to have a whole lot. Isis is going to be there. They're just going to have some damage and a little bit of CC. But outside of that, they're depending really on this Rob more than anything else. Dance is going to fall off. So he can fall off. Mojo is going to fling someone into the back line here. Zekker trying to fight out three members at the time. Oh, the Bologna all comes out. He recognizes the Susano knockup and he uses the CZ immunity of the Bologna ultimate to get away from that. Also, Motorcat coming out with lurking in the waters on that so big spear buff connect with Mana Warrior through the wall there uh, of the uh, red buff here. And now Commitment Commit is actually taking the uh, the uh, charge here and uh, bur bursting down this gold carry. Yeah, it's very smart for them to do it. They do have the Wrath online. In fact, they are going to get it. Bomberman got pulled into the silence and into his death. Aqua's going to get the kill on the Mando Warrior as Mojo Cat was the one thrown into the air. Root's going to come out on the Zekker, but Risky's going to pull out the again the Energy Marvels. Going to get a snipe <laughs> off with that one. It's going to force Glazy B to run away from this Thanatos. Yeah, I know Risky Ace has had a little bit of a problem sometimes with positioning uh, versus very, very good teams. But he's definitely channeling his inner morals right now and hitting all of those snipes and actually gets uh, gets the kill on commit and also gets enough damage on Clay to D for him to uh, retreat from that fight. I don't think I've ever seen a Bologna get stunned out or even knocked out of her bludgeon as fast as Glazy B did. I, I mean, she didn't even get to start the rotation of it. Normally, it's the spin move, you know, you get the mm -hmm. spin of the bludgeon, and then, oh, she's she's using this, stop. As soon as she started, Glazy was like, no, none of that. Threw her against <laughs> the wall, walked away. I, I've never seen a Bologna get knocked out of it that fast. Yeah, Glazy B, like I said earlier, he loves to run this aggressive honor in the jungle, so if there's anything that he sees that he can aggress upon he's very tr very very trigger happy to do so as nikar is being aggressive on my three members of meepas in the windows able to dash away able to actually root the bomberman and glaze is coming to peel a little bit for his um support here with nikaro i guess 
why are the supports <laughs> fighting in the solo lane is my first know. question. Both of them were in the solo lane. What are they doing here? A little yeah. bit of aggression in the mid lane here. Aqua is sitting not in the worst spot, but forced to ult away from the three, four man rotation of Commitment Committee. And because of that, his speed buff is going to be aggressed on. No Wrath at the second secure, but they don't need it. Eagles Rally gonna come through, gonna come only on a Glazy B. Mojo Cat is here as well, it's a 4v4. Glazy B's gonna use the ultimate to secure the kill on a Bomber Man with, along with Commit. Sonic Boom gonna crash through two of them. Major look in the Silence Root. Gonna likely take out Zekar as he's been epic uppercutted. Doesn't need the yeah. damage from the Nox Super Frieza Death Ball. Mojo Cat can eat that one instead. Yeah, so what we saw happening in that fight was that, um, in a, first of all, of course, Aqua got poked down, had to ult, though, not being able to secure his buff. But then Sekiri was using the Bologna ultimate to try to do so instead. And as a result, Isis was left alone in the back line. Community saw that, stopped fighting the Bologna, took down the Isis instead, and got two nice picks that fight. As they also now took down the tier 1 tower in Soul Lane and are aggressing upon the, the tier 1 mid tower as well. Yeah, and right now Commit the only one backing Glazy B gonna head over to his jungle buff on the okay. blue side. That, that sounds so <laughs> weird seeing it on her over here with a speed buff on him taking down a blue buff for his solo laner. Solo lane tower going to fall for Commitment Committee there. They did take the tier one mid, but they're take, trying to take away this red buff. And in fact, Spear Ball is not going to confirm it. Why try gonna walk away with that one? <laughs> red buff Kuma, guys. You better. <laughs> Actually, we saw me when the winners after they took that tier one tower in Soul Lane. They had three healthy members on their team there versus two, two half HP members of Commitment Committee. And I do believe they could have kept pushing there in that Soul Lane to be able to counter the aggression going on in the red buff. But they chose not to do so. They chose to back off. Nobody is scared of this ISIS on this team. If you look at the builds here, three breastplates of valor and a dynasty plate helm. Yeah. There's no there's no hard magic defense. The spirit robe slash mantle of discord, whichever one Mando decides to go into here, is going to be the only form of major magic protection as well as a ward stone from Nikaro. They're not scared of Isis. I mean, they're willing, they're, they are more scared of what Zekker, Aquas, and Risky are going to do in this one. Mojo Cat going to get rooted out, but a quick disengage, he's able to use that pluck to get away. Yeah, it feels like they're all buying like one defensive item here. I see three breastplates and one frostbound hammer. Everyone except for the Comet, who is definitely the ADC here this game. If we can even uh, say Commitment Committee uh, as having any roles. Why is... I, I just... You know, I was looking at it that whole time, I'm like, oh. This is Bologna with Frostbound. It's not Bologna with Frostbound. This is on her with Frostbound. Bomberman in oh, a yeah. bad oh, spot yeah, yeah. as he's forced to purify away from that one. And Aquas had to ult out of that fight. So ultimate forced out of that one for basically free. Yeah, Aquas is actually charging his ultimate a lot. He's getting a little bit scared of Commitment Committee. That is an ultimate that Nipos in the Windows need in the, to be aggressive to initiate the team fight, but are losing pretty early, and now Commitment Committee are starting to go through. They are dropping it as Blaze is getting on. Commitment is trying to <laughs> peel for him, and no one can peel from the snipes of the Risky Ace, channeling his inner Marwas. Meanwhile, the fight goes on. Epic upset from White Threat, securing the kill of the Sir Bomb and Ice. Risky Ace is still there, getting low. And then the side from Darkness gets taken out by Nikar. Pretty low. Mojo Cat does get the return kill on this Nikar knock. Now, Saki Wee is in trouble for three members of Commitment Committee trying to. Burst him down and able to do so as only Mojo Cat is alive on the side of Meepo in the windows. And this is a free gold here for Kurt Committee. Yeah, they can go ahead and take this one, no problem. They've got enough defense to be able to sustain through it and enough damage to be able to burst it down here. Mojo Cat, however, is going to stick around. Doesn't have lurking in the waters, doesn't, but he does have that. That's what he's looking to get here. It's going to be silenced to the way. Commitment Committee is going to get it. Not in time. The Wrath from Mando was a lot better than Mojo Cat's. He wasn't able to get it through. Mojo Cat looks like he might even fall here. Nope, they're just going to go ahead and disengage. Mojo Cat gets out of that one free. Yeah, it was actually some CC on the side of Commitment Committee that stopped the uh, Solbeck Wrath. They're coming down from Mojo Cat, and they were able to secure that. And since uh, they were really low, but since Mojo Cat is playing that support and being a few levels underneath them, not having 
the damage output, he was actually not able to secure any of the kills here on equipment committee, and he uh, recognized that and just backed off. He actually wrathed early, I think. If you look at the cooldown timer between the two rats from them, it's mm. it's barely a half of a second. Now, the one thing with wrath is that it's half as effective damage wise after the first one. So he had a it's a thousand damage for the first wrath, five hundred for the next one. So Modric had just off the mark with that one. Gonna take a little bit of poke trying to get to these mid camps, but it's almost twenty minutes into the game. The mid camps aren't mm. that important, and take your risk in your life on that one. Hold up, the blink is gonna be coming through. Why try is gonna get plucked out of there? However, it's just gonna be a quick disengage. Mm. Maybe not. Maybe not. Risk case is getting those that damage out and bursting down. Actually, why are having to back off and to and respecting the damage coming out from this Rama here? Mana Warrior is not doing so. He's trying to get a lot of poke off and getting a little bit of flux. But the combo from Nikaro is off the mark and they're not able to, to lock down and secure any kills there. Meanwhile, though, in the uh, solo lane, we have Glaze B here who is trying to uh, take down the, one, the tower. And it looks like the members of Meepo in the windows are ignoring these archers. They just want the kill. They're so frustrated. They want to kill. They want to punish. This is Glaze B on here for overextending it and blink! Oh my god, Glaze, you're a god. Glaze, you gotta be able to get out of that one. But Commit is gonna take the tier 1 tower over in the dual lane. Three people are stacked up from Commitment Committee, where it's only two from Meatball. Mojo Cat's a little bit under level compared to his opposing support, I guess you can say. Yeah, uh, the blurs here on the side of the community, community are a little bit blurry right now. The knockup goes off onto Risky Ace, having to use his Sanker to get away. Now going up in the air to do some damage, getting a lot of damage on Mana Warrior, but he has a little bit of defense and he's able to teleport out of all that lockdown from Epos in the windows and should be able to uh, secure the escape here. A great use of the ultimate from Nick Harrell. While he wasn't looking to secure the kill, he was using it more for the damage reduction that comes from the Nox ultimate there. Gonna get the silence in the root onto Aquas, but doesn't matter. He's not very tanky. Eagle's rally gonna come through, and likely the oh, no Aquas. Aquas. No, you can't miss that ultimate, May. That was like a given. Commit coming in from out of position in the jungle does get the kill Aquas but gets taken out by Zerbaba but why is he blinking on the Kuma card he wants a security kill able to get the uh, root and the dash comes in from Mana Warrior as well like to secure the kill though it goes to Wise and Mordekast being rude by the car not able to heal anymore first for Zerbaba who does pop the circle of protection able to heal up himself and his uh, support as well <laughs> Healthy enough Not for the today. rest of the gang here from Commitment Committee that it's time to back off a little bit, get a little bit of XP, and most of all, heal up the HP in that fountain. There's so much cooldown reduction on the side of Commitment Committee that even if they're staying in these fights for such a long time, they're able to get off almost two rotations of ultimates with it. 30% mm -hmm. both on the support and mid laner, Y Try and Nick. Both with the cooldown boots and breastplate of valor, and now both with the dynasty plate helm as well. Looks like to be going also into the celestial legion helm finished up here by Y Try, the anti crit, which Rom is going into at the moment. So it's a great counter pickup, but mostly for the 90 physical protections. Once again, they don't care about the magic damage from Bomberman. No, they're definitely targeting here to build a little bit more uh, defensive, like physical defense here um, to uh, try to... Uh, they're respecting the uh, Rama late game much more, I would say, than the Isis. As we did mention, he did go into Dynasty Plate Helmet. He has got a lot of penetration for Magical BD. He doesn't have that much damage to really back it off here in this Isis build. Yeah, and one thing, it's another th uh, little thing. There's so many little things with the Celestial Legion Helm that people sometimes forget about. Yes, everybody knows it's the anti-crit helm, but when you are crit, you gain 40 magic power. And that's a lot of the Kumakarna. Nox going to be coming down onto Mojo Cat alongside of it. Glazy B going to get the kill onto Aquas. Mojo Cat going to get flung along the wall. And Nick Haro going to get the credit for that kill. A clean two-man kill in that and it looks like they're not done yet looking for blood risky ace is gonna be the next target yeah he's using his all his purification statue trying to get away but the cc and the chase mobility commitment is too much they take him down to take down 
So Barberman as well, and they're taking this tier 2 tower in the mid lane, and they want the Phoenix. Yep, and looks like the Phoenix is definitely going to be the target that's taken out here. Meditation popped, and the bird is going to fall. Next target looks like to be the dual lane tier 2 tower, or possibly just jungle camps, depending on how they feel. He's going to be going to jump over the wall there and take that down. He does have a little bit of penetration in his build with the kin size, but that's really not going to do too much for him against those towers. But he is ultimately going to drop it. It's going to be a disengage as the Gold Fury is going to be dropped by three of the other members of the team. Yeah, I'm actually... Oh, Glacy B! He jumped just as Aqua's ultimate is. So going down, he's able to juke that stun. And Aqua's getting taken out by Man of War, who's doing the rotation. That was hot, Glacy. Mordercat having to use Lurking and Water to try to get away, but he's chased that down really by good. four members of the Mimic Committee. And another kill going to Glacy now have six kills on the board, which is the most in this game. And him and his team are now looking to see to this uh, Phoenix here, also in the left lane. They're popping shell, they're going in, secondly trying to use the Bologna ultimate. Just connect with them, but the rest of his team is not there to do the damage. However, the Phoenix is doing a lot of damage on these commitment community members. They now pop the second shell. The car having to dash away, secondly still in the fight, getting a little bit low. The Ramos not getting out, basically having to use the jump to try to Juke, a few of them able to do so, and him and his team here are getting pretty low, pretty low, but they're able to uh, back out of this fight and go and get even more items looking to that full build soon. Yeah, Aquas going into the ultimate there, but is immediately forced to disengage as his all of his targets are kind of clumped up together, sitting inside of each other as the power of Nox is. Fire Giant is being looked at here and has been started up, sitting at almost half HP already. Risky Ace is doing quite a bit of damage into it, and nobody from the side of Command Committee has realized this. Mando is going to be the first one. Meatball's going to get the Fire Giant for free, but how many people will they lose in return for this? Aquas is going to be the first one to fall. Mando's going to get the credit for that, teamed up with Committee. Yeah, the chasing potential here from Kamingo community in these gods is enormous and, and they're not letting Risky Ace get away here. Glaze is trying to use the Death Assured to secure the kill and actually Bologna Ultimate is up again and able to nearly protect um, his ADC Rama who does go down eventually. Mojocat is trying to get some CC immunity and trying to get some damage onto the members of the Commitment Committee, setting up for a kill for Sir Bomberman, but he's now alone to defend versus these four members of the Committee, and they're not taking any prisoners, or are they? Not sure if they want to take the title or they want to kill him. They're finally setting a little bit for the title, but they're getting really low, and I'm not sure if they can kill them now, as Aquas is respawning. Wyther is going down in the Kuma ultimate. Commit's really low, getting taken down by Aquas, finally hitting that ultimate. Yo, man was being able to get away from that. Why did I mean I woke up here is fine. Aqua's trying to put this CC so that he will not die and let the uh, fire archers finish off the Titan. But down he goes and up the HP of the Titan does as well since that uh, that kill. If, if any target inside the Titan circle that's being targeted by the Titan is dying, the Titan will heal up. Uh, I think it's about 2000 HP or something like that. And it's, it's Probably sitting at a little bit more healthy state now. Yeah, I believe it's 15% if you reset the Titan of its of its maximum HP at the time. With two birds still up, it's not at its lowest point. And with the mid Phoenix about to respawn here, it's going to be able to heal a good amount of that up if they're not able to stop those fire giants from pushing into it. Yeah, I feel like Commitment Committee has just kind of overrun me by the window so much this game that they didn't feel the need to even put words around Fire Giant, and I only had two words around the Gold Fury actually, so pretty nice recognition here from Meepa's and the Windows to first of all even still get those wards down, but second of all realize that they could actually steal this objective even though they're being a little bit overrun here at the moment, being 11,000 gold down here versus Commission Committee. Meepaw needed to realize that they were pushing a further pushing forward a little bit sooner as Sir Bomberman takes about half of his HP just from the single combo of Nick Haro. So Titan is able to heal up maybe about a good thousand or so HP, but not too much here. Nick Haro gonna dash in, only get the Siphon Darkness down, not get any kind of follow-up damage from it. Instead, they're gonna turn their sights to the left side bird. 
Yeah, but I, I kind of feel like me behind the windows. They're behind, but they're starting to get full builds now. Like, Mikumita has capped out in terms of builds. And we have to say that team does break a commit, actually stunning, setting up ultimate on many members of people in the windows. He does, however, go underneath that gate and he gets taken out. Rommel's coming out from risk gate, Glaze having to jump away. Why is they're being shredded by these teams right now? Several members getting low on the side of me behind the windows. The car and man are lingering there. Aqua's trying to get the kill of man and not able to do so. More just being really aggressive. Sekiri having to back and defend versus his fire down here in the mid lane. Members of the committee are there, but they're getting really low. So Bomb and Dustic are place to be. The car having to uh, escape into Man of War, who does dash away to safety and uh, come in, come in. you think they would back off now being this low but they're, they're staying and lingering in this jungle meet within the windows yeah it's probably not the best idea for the mojo cat while he didn't have a ton of damage it still is a sobek he's able to control them long enough more than anything else mando with all of that mobility is going to be able to get out and nick haro is going to be able to barely squeeze away there on the other side of that gold fury but aquas has the ultimate to go over everything doesn't matter mando is going to fall it's going to be a three for one exchange i believe in that fight yeah and hashtag meatballs coming back guys they're only down at four kills now with this goal here they're only 9k closing the gap that used to be 11k just a few minutes ago they don't have that mid phoenix uh anymore that did go down earlier but they have two phoenixes left you know and uh, the next fire giant is, is uh, getting up soon, and uh, Meepo in the windows are also soon going to be able to close down their final builds here and potentially being able to do a fair fight versus the commitment committee. Yeah, as far as builds go, really uh, almost everybody is 6 on just looking to finish up their last items on the side of commitment. It's just why try and Nick finishing up what is, I'm going to assume, Soul Reavers from both of them. Pretty late for Book of Thoughts, even though it's the nice flat hunter damage. The extra MP5 and a lot of mana doesn't quite matter here. Why try it caught in the middle of four of them? Forced to use the epic uppercut on Risky Ace, but it doesn't matter. Aqua's gonna fall down and force him into the sleepy passive. Commitments here to try and save the life of Why try long place B, but they're both getting bursted down just as quickly. Why try is going to fall. Ultimate is going to get the to help secure the kill. Mondo Warrior gonna get the credit for that one. But Bomberman's gonna get the kill. Mondo Warrior's gonna pick up the double kill. Yeah, this is a fight that any other team after that Kuma Karna, their only P goes down, they wouldn't have tried to take that fight anymore, but having that pressure with the fire minions in the mid lane, Sekui is ha is taking out of the fight that is still a uh, pretty even even game here for them, and actually Kamehameha Committee comes out a little bit on the topic, getting three kills and only losing two, and that's enough for them to now start this fire giant as people in the windows is going to have to choose between the, their own mid lane phoenix or trying to defend this fire. M Mondo does have that wrath and is able to safely secure that one and both of them are going to be able to disengage not the most immobile of gods between on her and Susano able to get out pretty easily yeah but they don't want to Mondo doesn't want to let the members of me but in the windows is back here to defend that phoenix and he's going into the jungle a little bit hard half-heartedly half but since Risky Ace is also spawning, he recognizes there's no point in trying to chase here, and he settles for that blue buff instead. Yeah, blue buff gonna be dropped, but not picked up by anybody. Neither of them wanting to opt for that one. <laughs> uh, Wide Track gonna be backing here and finishing up that Soul Reaver as I expected from this player here. Really, the only major difference in these two players' builds is Celestial Legion Helm for Wide Try and Gem of Isolation for Nikara. This is disgusting. Yeah, there's a lot of CC in that Nick Haro. Indeed, Nox is also somewhat a full bit Nox. I would also not want to meet inside of a dark alley. On the side of Meatballs and the Windows, though, it is worth mentioning that the two carries this game with the most kills, which is Risky Ace and the Rom and Aquas on the Thanatos, they actually finished their builds as well. So I'm really excited to see what damage output they can provide here in the next team fight. 
Bomberman is Satan confirmed. I'm just gonna leave it. At that. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it that wow, one with the lovely six 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 slash line coming out of Sir Bomberman. I'm surprised at how much Aquas is able to do in this game. His team is able to burst down these targets. Why try? Gonna get the blink up into it. Risky A is gonna get hit with the Frieza Death Ball as two are hit with the Silence the Spirit Ball. I'm sorry. Aquas coming through. Glazy put at critical condition, and Mojo Cat trying to chase him out is gonna get the credit on the Glazy B. Yeah, he's now chasing on to one and warrior here, but the CC Pia coming up from Nikaro is enough to protect this old lady. Me, all oh, the amazing taunts by three man taunt by Manda Warrior. Nikaro, however, does get taken out as a response. Why they being shredded by these two carries on the side by me, Manda Winners, and he is not gonna get away. As Commitment Committee now realizing that uh, the fight is pretty even and they can't be playing like it's kindergarten anymore because this Titan if has, ha is full HP again and Man of Warrior is the only remaining member alive uh, unless Aquas has something to say about it. Mm, it may have dashed a little yeah. bit early there, just out of range. A great pull, but it doesn't matter. The damage from Aquas is way too much for Mondo to hit, handle, and it's going to be a deicide. However, the Fire Giant's down, so there's really only towers and buffs to take away from this one. <laughs> that moment at 35 minutes when there's still three tier two towers. Well, at least me on the windows have something to do while they have the seaside. But they're actually not even opting to step on that half of the uh, of the map right now. No, instead just electing to completely clear out the buffs. Go Fury really isn't all that important at this time. Mojo Cat, the only one. Okay, never mind. Mojo Cat has finished off his fifth item. Actually, now looking into his sixth item, which will likely be the Mantle of Discord. I don't really see the need for a Hide of the Urchin this late into the game. Zekker also looking for his final item, probably this mantle of Discord as well. And it looks like the Hickfall was sold by Glazy B, looking to finally get a new item online outside of that mm. one. He's trying out the Odysseus bow here that recently got buff and is a little bit cheaper at the moment. We're gonna see how just how successful he is with that in the next team fight here. Will be pretty pretty interesting to see what happens if the Sekiri and the Moika actually buys that Discord, because that can be a potential game changer if they get a five man stun off of that uh, passive. Spear Robe actually picked up on the side of Zekker, which makes sense. He's been it's, it's a lot of hard CC on the team for a commitment committee, so being able to do that and get the uh, damage reduction online. Whenever, whenever you get hit by the hard CC, Spirit Robe does give you damage reduction by that. The passive got nerfed on it a little bit, but it's still the good old same Spirit Robe that we all know and love. Mojo Cat forced to dash away from y -Tri because he does have that bubble online, but it's going to be a pop by Nick Haro's root. Yeah, I saw actually Scrim yesterday with Mojo Cat as well. He likes to be a little bit in the front line and it's very, uh, very, um, pretty often that that a bubble is bursted and indeed having the soul back he is going to definitely be the mid laner of his team composition right now he was in the winners are moving up their position a little bit and uh, they're actually ready to face commitment committee here uh, in, in the middle of the jungle to uh to challenge him for the uh, next fire giant yeah, but they need to spread out and be careful if Aquas comes crashing down on the two mini of them, which they have pulled Zekker and took, wow, a lot more damage than I expected from that one. Even with the proc of the Spirit Rogue coming through, he still took two-thirds of his life bar. Mid lane Phoenix is going to be respawning here in just a moment, but there's a, already a wave of fire minions there. You're going to force Bomberman to go rotate for him because of that, Fire Giant's going to be taken for free by Commitment. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that Aquas did not try to challenge his fire jam with that uh, Planetos ultimate, but uh, I guess he recognized that he wanted better to be just safe and be able to stay with his team and try to defend this uh, mid lane Phoenix as it has spawned. And this being looked upon by uh, Kamim Community as the fire breaks down out here in the mid lane. Nick Haro being bursted down very heavily, but Aquas is making the rotation in. Nick Haro surely to fall here? No! Aquas is barely just gonna stay alive. Nick Haro gonna take him down. Aquas rooted in place by the Kuma Karna, trying to do what he can, but Mando has made the rotation in and does get the kill. Bomberman's gonna take down Commit. It's gonna be a two for two, and those are some very hefty respawn timers. 
Very hefty indeed. As hefty is this fire giant, but the damage here that does take a Mojica with that honor just if you White Star is going down and the attack speed of Risk Ace is really really quick. And Mana Warriors actually has to pay for it with his life to try to defend this Kumbakarna here. Not sure that's what you want to do when you're at a uh, carry character. And the blade comes out from Blazy again. He's trying to heal up by this camp. Water is there. Risky Ace is getting out of position and getting taken out as well. Sir Bowman is still there trying to get the Spirit Ball off, but he has to go and defend as there's fire minions pouring in and attacking this Titan. Well, actually, the firemen are just now going to be making their way down lane because it was spot because Phoenix was up at the time. The only way there was a couple of just regular minions, but Bomberman able to get going to be able to clear those out just fine. We see a red potion, not an elixir, just a just a standard red potion has been picked up by Aqua. It's going to give him a little bit of extra damage going into this next fight. Yeah, we also see here Risk Ace switching up and getting that Wind Demon instead. Trying to give himself a little bit more mobility, which is going to help him whenever he gets a little bit out of position here. But the builds have been finished up almost nearly by both teams. I expect this Mojo Cat to be able to finish his Cloak of Concentration soon. And hopefully going into this Mandal of Discord, as the members of Commitment Committee has now respawned. Two of them having the Fire Giant. And they're looking for a picture in the uh, left side, uh, at the left side Phoenix. Ooh, that could be painful for them the next fight. Aquas was forced to use that ultimate very early, and with the team grouping up here on the left-hand side, and Mojo Cat's bubble being popped yet again just by Nick Haro's root alone, it's not the hardest ability to hit, but the fact he's able to get it so consistently on that mm. bubble is very impressive by him, considering it's on 30% cooldown at the moment. He's going to be able to fire that off all the time. Very delayed reaction out of Meatball here as the Phoenix is being pressured down here. Why try going to get thrown into the back line? Glazy B already at critical health, and Mojo Cat is lurking in the waters trying to find something. Not being able to do more than a little bit of damage onto Mana Warrior. Meanwhile, in the mid lane here, Commit is taking out Aquas, who is on a 65 second cooldown. Mojo Cat having to dash out from the damage here coming out from Commit Committee. Commit getting a little bit low, Wi-Fi is a little bit low as well, but they're still being brave enough to try to take this Phoenix. Meanwhile, Commit recognizes that he can stop backing because there's no one threatening him, and this is a free Phoenix in the left lane. As the rest of his team is just trying to fall, he's doing enough damage to, uh, to uh, for me and the winners to recognize that they have to stop chasing and they have to start defending. Yeah, because that right side Phoenix did fall solely to commit. He was able to split push that on his own. Mojo Cat's bubble popped yet again. Not going to be available for the small part of the fight as the Fire Giant has been able to heal them up so effectively. Mojo Cat bursts it down so low, but Zekker's trying to make his way to get any kills, but they're not able to secure any. Why try going to get stunned out by the Spirit Ball, but they're not going to be able to chase any further into this. It's going to be a disengage with all three Phoenixes down and 3,000 gold in hand at time first elixir of the game goes to commit yeah it's definitely that point of the game now reaching 42 minutes when both the full builds are being finished as well as those elixirs as well and i kind of feel like commitment committee has recognized the powers by coming out from this rama and the Thanatos on the side of meatball and the windows and they're also seeing how long these respawn timers are so they're being a little bit more careful now and actually disengaging for a change. i just like to point out at the moment that Commit has 75% crit chance on Mercury. <laughs> and when you have a Wind Demon, that means oh you have a 75% chance of your auto attack increasing your attack and movement speed. More power, more power means stronger crits. Commit, yeah. got, commit got left alone in that last fight with Aquas, and in the 1v1, Commit was able to get the one crit that made the difference in the fight. Fire yeah. Giant being taken for free here yet again. Yeah, there's no one there on the side of me in the windows who recognizes they have two Phoenixes and to defend, and they have bigger problems right now. Sukui is getting uh, targeted, but that man of the smell, he's able to get away from that. A lot of CC coming out for Covid Committee, a huge knockoff from that Solbeck as well. Glacy having to try to retreat, still taken out by this nice snipes of the uh, mini marbles here. Also gets a kill on Commit. Two members down on the side of Commit Committee, getting a return kill onto the Risk Ace. 
Meanwhile, Wi-Fi is getting targeted here and being plucked and taking out by Sekui. Aqua is getting comboed by Nikaro and killed as well as uh, two members of Kobe and Community are still alive and still aggressing it into this three members of Meepal and the Windows here still being uh, very brave in the mid lane. Yeah, but I mean, look at who's left alive. The very tanky Mojo and Zekker, who really don't take that much damage from these. Mojo Cat, as you can see, took a full combo and barely took maybe 10-15% of his health there. Zekker taking quite a bit of poke from these two, however, and the Titans getting a little bit of minion poke onto it. Yeah, but it's just being healed. Every time Mandros feels like he's going to dash into the Titan and then dashes out, the Titan is healing up a little bit because uh, he is in that circle. And even if he's not dying, he's leaving the circle. And that also leaves him. Meanwhile, Bomberman here getting uh, getting uh, caught out in left safety. He's having to use his Sanctuary, getting grasped on by Mana Warrior. He's able to retreat his Mojo Cat is there to zone a little bit for his mid lane. And Nikaro hitting another one of these nice skill shots on the Nox. And that is going to be it for Commitment Committee, who is uh, respecting that all the members of Meepos and the Windows have respawned. And they're now going to wait and group up with their team for the next fight here. Yeah, and that's exactly what they need to do. Defense Elixir has been picked up by y -Try. Very interesting to see the a defense as opposed to an offensive one. But I guess he wants to be a little bit more of a frontliner. You know, the, the semi-tanky assassin's not quite enough. So let's have the semi-tanky guardian finally step up and do some defensive support. I'm actually surprised that he's not selling that Soul Reaver and opting for something like a Nemea now as we see this Rama getting online. Uh, also, uh, the Phoenixes has respawned in the silence. Oh, Commit getting shredded by Risky Ace. Man, and we're being out of position again, taking out by Risky Ace as well. Ends up with two kills here. The Titan is being respawned, um, but the fight goes on. Glacey being able to take out Aquas, Nick Carr, and Wi-Fi are the only member members of the Community Committee versus four members of Nippon in the Windows. And still, they're staying in the fight for some reason. Nick Carr is hitting his roof, but not on above his uh, Siphon Darkness. And they're overextending big time here in the left lane, and Wi-Fi gets taken out, and Nick Carr is the only member member here of Commitment Committee. And I don't know if they're throwing this game right now. Uh, I mean. I can't even tell if they're throwing or if they're toying with them or what they're doing, but Commitment Committee is not committing to any of their <laughs> actions here. They they keep trying to kind of go halfway into these fights, and then they kind of back halfway off, and because of this one, they're able to allow Meatball to push up this mid lane, likely even take the Phoenix away from them as four members are still alive here. They kind of just... They kind of just left Zekker to kind of defend against this Titan here, but I don't know if that right side of Phoenix is going to be able to hold itself. That's a wave of fire minions there, and that likely might fall. Zekker's made the rotation over, has recognized that, is going to try and do his best to stop it. Yeah, and he's lucky enough to have a minion wave of his own spawning just at that time and being able to distract those fire minions. Just a little bit, so he's able to rotate in a time. Meanwhile, there's Mojo Cat and Sir Bombman on the map, checking that uh, fire giant, but it's not up just yet. And uh, Meepo and the Wind is going to uh, have to back off more to defend both this left side and the uh, right side Phoenix, who still has, I think, uh, one wave of uh, fire minions. Uh, this left side will continue to pour those fire minions for a while. The right side no longer has the fire minions. This is the last mid wave of fire minions. Yeah, mid wave. Yeah, why try is following those ones in. Is going to try and push that up as much as he can. Titan took a considerable amount of damage in that last one because they were able to kite them around for so long. A few minion waves made their way in. So I have a question here. Okay. If four members of the commitment committee were to distract the members of Meepo and the Windows. At this right side, Phoenix, do you think Comet having all that power and credit his build would be able to sneak in and finish off the Titan from the left side? Oh, for sure. With how weak it is already, Commit would just need maybe five, six basic attacks here. Mojo Cat trying to steal this away, but it goes into the ultimate instead of electing for the Wrath. Once again, using it a little bit too early. Glazy B in critical condition. Two ultimates used to try and get to him. May have used that blink a little bit early. In fact, he did. Aquas gonna get the kill for that one. Forced to use both relics, but perish for his sins. Commit gets the kill onto Aquas. 
Yeah, but it's getting really low in return, and I'm not sure if it should keep taking his fight. So he does, he hits the ultimate on the risk case, he gets taken out as well. So Gui and Mordekat are there, but they don't really have the damage to fight these four members of Kamehameha Committee now aggressing. Sekiri is trying to get Nick hard, not recognizing the rotation coming in. He's trying to clear for Bomberman and how to use the Sanctuary. Members of Commitment Committee are getting low, but so is Bomberman. He gets taken out, and only two members remain here on the side of Meepo and the Windows. And I'm not sure if they can hold versus this sieging going on from the four, four Fire Giant members of Commitment Committee. Oh, for sure not anymore with Mojo Cat perishing here and Zekker not able to put out the damage. This Titan's at critical HP here and is going to fall after a 49 minute game. Commitment Committee gets the credit for the 2 0 victory. 43 to 40 reads the final slash line. Yeah, and with that, with that first troll game and the second game, there was a little bit. Oh, uh, I wanna say messy, but I'm gonna say messy. <laughs> very, very interesting and very, very action-packed indeed. They're actually being able to take the finals here of the November Battle for Hala, and they are going to be our champions here, actually. Big uh, shout out for them for <laughs> being able to uh, take this final, especially game one in such a convincing fashion, actually. We're going to uh, try to get them here into uh, the Discord for a short little interview um i think it's gonna take a little bit while for them to get here though we have glacy here so far if he can get uh, pulled over here by yithens we have a lot of interesting uh, questions to ask him actually yeah well until he gets pulled here we'll go ahead and briefly kind of talk about the final in game strats um oh never mind it looks like he was able to be pulled over very quick Hello, Glacey, the jungler of the Commitment Community, and congratulations to taking the November Monthly Finals. How are you feeling? It was very, yeah, we feel good. Can you comment a little bit about your picks here in the, their first game? What was your game plan going in with this uh, Vilish, uh, Vulcan, I believe, Ao Kuang, and a few other, and Erlang as well, and, and Hebo in the jungle? Well, what we decided to do early on was to be as meme as possible, and we felt like we accomplished that tonight. Okay, it was a very interesting picks indeed. So having a burst composition like this, is this your normal reply when you find yourself facing a sustained composition built around a rock? Well, we just felt like that we could one-shot anyone with our comp, so we didn't really feel threatened by mm -hmm. the raw so we just build around them we just killed them so you decided to go for a little bit of a knock up and a village combo here kind of although nick carl decides to miss his ult like half the time so <laughs> so i want to talk a little bit here as well about this second game because you went with a lineup that looked to begin with with the picks it looked like you guys were actually gonna go for something pretty normal here but then you kept kind of shifting it up in the lobby and these roles that you guys ended up with, was it just because of you stopped switching or, or had you actually decided on prehand that this would be uh, the different gods that each player would play? What we decided first going into like the tradings and all that was that we were going to pick the gods we wanted and then we were going to play Russian roulette and we just <laughs> decided the second round where we were just going to get our picks. Yeah, a little bit interesting actually, because I, you know, I know you and I've seen you actually run this on her in the jungle and you did a pretty, pretty few hop links this game. Also shout out to this one jump you did to uh, escape an ultimate coming out from the Thanatos Aquaman in the, in the uh, jungle on the dual, dual, line, dual lane side. Yeah, um, it's something I've been practicing for a really long time and I'm hoping uh, our rail captain, more Brooklyn, will allow me to play it in scrims and other tournaments. <laughs> well, hopefully he will be convinced as he sees the vault when he does come home from Thanksgiving as well. You guys had a few subs playing for you tonight. You had Wyatra in the mid, Commit, who is your coach, as I know, and also Nick Haro. How did this affect your team play this evening? Well, as we stated before, we decided to go into this tournament being as meme as possible. And Nick Haro, if you want a meme, he's the person to go to. <laughs> Great so, plan indeed. 
we were happy to see you because I remember a little bit before the game, it was actually very close for you guys not to be able to participate at all. Yeah, we were struggling to find the amount of people we needed, and thankfully, Nick Hall decided to be the meme that we needed. <laughs> And meme he was, and he hit a lot of interesting skill shots that game as well. Well, that is going to be it for tonight. Glacy, is there any shoutouts that you want to do? Uh, shout out to Quas's double quit Thanatos that just kept two shotting everyone. Uh, the team, obviously, and it's my central for hosting the tournament. Thank you. And with that, that concludes our evening here, guys. Thank you all for watching this month. We're going to be back with a little bit of a different format uh, going forward. So keep an eye on our Discord channels. We also want to give a little bit of a shout out, of course, to our sponsors, Gamersup.gg, Loot Tracker, Discord, and of course, um, Smite Central tickets. Oh no, Hyrus Expo tickets that you can get with the Smite Central code as soon as more of them are hopefully released. That is going to be it for this fine evening, guys. Hopefully, we'll see you guys soon. Have a lovely rest of your night.